High School Game of the Week on Channel 22 Sports. It's the Bay League opener. Losing to Olympians, welcome back Palos Verde Sea Kings into the Bay League after a short time in Division 10. And we are here at Olympian Field. And along with Charity Bailey and Rufus Washington and Tom Strick Fadden and the crew, I'm Lou Stowers, welcoming you back to another exciting season in the Bay League. And Charity Bailey, a huge win on the road for the Olympians against Shure. Yeah, last week they sealed the deal and they're ready to come into the Bay League. Coach um, Tolliver said that that's the steam that they needed to come in strong on tonight. And Rufus Washington, a big matchup on offense on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. What you've got is the number one rusher in the South Bay against the highly recruited Andrew Tretnowski of Palos Verdes. Palos Verdes, of course, stepping up the run with the big dogs, as you mentioned, coming back to the Bay League after having spent the last couple of years in the Ocean League. But it should be an exciting offensive contest, but both of these teams also have some outstanding defensive players. They certainly do. And getting back on that offense, Mark Rogers and Mano Sakona really running things, so they've just been piling up the numbers. Yeah, Coach says that uh, as long as Sakona continues to control his offense, they'll be just fine. He also says now over the last three games, Mark Rogers has put up over 900 yards. He said just imagine had he played the first two games this year. He said Sakona's comfortable with the offense now. He said he can run the offense. He knows the plays. And he says as long as they're physical tonight and Rogers goes for over 300, he said it's a wrap. They're going to pull out the W. That's, uh, well, that's good news for uh, the coach of the uh, coach Dion Tolliver of the Olympians. And what about this Olympian team? They're up on the road, they're down at home. Up and down, but they're a good team coming in the league play. As we talked about during the preseason, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. Now is when the playoff run begins. And so for both of these teams, it's going to be a good one. The Olympian defense, you got to watch for this tonight. As we mentioned, Trudnowski, a prolific passer, and they spread the ball around to three different receivers about evenly, so you can't key on one guy. The ball is going to be flying all over the place, and that uh, losing her backfield is going to have to be ready. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch Andrew Trudnowski because he certainly is a Division I prospect, and he could be going home to Washington State. Yeah, there actually is somebody from Pullman, Washington that we all know now. Well, get back uh, in your seats and get ready for the opening kickoff of the Bay League. It's going to be the Olympians and the Sea Kings coming up next on Channel 22 Sports. Just before the opening kickoff of the Bay League action with the Losinger Olympians and the Palos Verde Sea Kings, they're doing the coin toss at midfield. Referee David Badnock and all of the captains from both sides, Losinger in their home navy blue with the white numerals, and Palos Verdes in their white jerseys, red numerals, and their black pants and black helmets with the uh, Triton across the helmet there. And uh, boy, it's gonna be a whole lot of fun, Rufus, to see Andrew Trudnowski 149 plus yards a game and already seven touchdown passes this year. Absolutely, he is a prolific passer. As we mentioned in the pregame show, one of the things that Trudnowski will do is that he will spread the ball around. They feature three receivers in their offense because of uh, Trudnowski's passing, and that's uh, Jade, Aranda, and Gelb all of whom have just about the same amount of yards. And what that tells you is just that he's got up. three different options to choose from. And what that will do is spread the Losinger uh, defensive backfield. Of course, on the other side of the coin, we know that uh, Losinger has an outstanding defense under first coach Dion Tolliver. And uh, today, tonight's game, we're going to uh, 
dedicate this game in the memory of Army Specialist Fernando Robinson, who gave his life for his country in Afghanistan, was put to rest today out in Riverside, and uh, cameraman Eric Chavez is representing the Channel 22 family, and uh, our heartfelt condolences to the Robinson family and also the Losinger family as Robinson was a graduate here, an ROTC graduate here at Losinger, and thanks to Sergeant Fred Jacobs, the ROTC advisor here at Losinger, for giving us that information. Losinger will kick the ball off, and they will kick the ball to the Sea Kings, and Sea Kings will be going against the wind in the first half. Going against the wind, it's a Friday the 13th. Trixodexophobia. There you go. Somebody's going to get Trixodex tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Question is, the Olympians, uh, and this is an odd contrast. This Sea King team from Palos Verdes, they're 3-2 and two on the season. All three wins have come on the road. Their two home games, they lost. So they're hoping that their trend continues, whereas the Olympians are 1-1 one and one on the road and 2-1. and one. Uh, at home, so they know how to defend their home turf, and this should be an exciting game for the fans. The last couple of weeks on Channel 22 have been exciting, actually. We'll go back a oh, couple yeah. of weeks ago to Halcap Field, and mm -hmm. just last week when we went down to Bosa Grande in the uh, no-call game. That um, <laughs> That's right, two calls. So one to open up the game, one to close it out. Absolutely. As the kick is made by Rafael Reyes, and we're underway here at Olympian Field. And the ball is being returned very nicely all the way up to the 38-yard line by Adam Wagner. Wagner with an excellent return there brings it out to, as you say, about the 38. Bit of a breakdown on the Olympian special teams. They normally cover a little bit better than that. They give this, Seah this Seahawk team, Sea King rather, we know that Redondo are the Seahawks and uh, Palos Verdes the Sea Kings. That's right. That's right, so uh, the clock has been moving here, so they may have to put on about, uh, well, or maybe the clock didn't move after the kickoff. Well, it did move. It's down at 1122. It looks like they're going to let it stay where it is, but I would agree with you. I don't think it took him 28 seconds to run uh, that playoff. The handoff to Derek Soler, and Soler is going to go all the way into losing her territory and all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. Wow, what a shocker by the Sea Kings. Everybody in the house thought that it was going to be a passing play, but no, just a sweep around the right side, and Soler goes all the way for a 62-yard touchdown at 6 to nothing Sea Kings. What a way to open it, boy. That will shock your system, as I'm sure it did to the Olympians on the first play from scrimmage. 62-yard touchdown run for David Soler. Ramsey will add on the extra points. Nice high, true, and through. And Sean Ramsey tacks on the extra point to make it 7 to nothing. All of a sudden, boy, that uh, drive, Rufus, took 18 seconds. It One took 18 play. seconds, and that was how long it took him to run 62 yards. One play, one score. That's right. The Olympians will need to regroup quickly again. I think what happened was they got caught, as you might expect, as, as could happen to any of us. So we're going to see on the replay, they're obviously sitting back. Can't see it from this angle, but they're anticipating the pass, obviously, as we talked about Trinowski and... Going around the right side, virtually untouched on that, was uh, Solar. Yeah, he's uh, nobody around him, actually. is The closest man to him was Kevin Hodrick. That's about it. Out of the game tonight, Rufus, is Deshaun Mills, who had to have surgery on that broken wrist. Both of the bones in his wrist have pins in them now. And uh, he said that he's probably out for the year. So our best wishes to Deshaun, and we'll see him back in his senior year next year. So now Ramsey is going to tee it up. Jeez. So the Trixodexophobia bites the Olympians first. 
Well, you're right. This Friday the 13th is Man. already showing a bit of bad luck. But the good side and the good news is that we still got four whole quarters left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ramsey kicks the ball high in the air. It's going to be taken by Glenn Tolliver. Tolliver bullying his way up, gets into a scrum, and gets uh, about right where uh, the Sea Kings were on the other side of the field. This is going to be marked at about the 37-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Olympians. And maybe Mark Rogers is a little pumped up to go for a little gallop himself. Well, wouldn't that be a surprise if he were to do that? One of the things, you know, when we first saw the Olympians earlier in the season, Rogers was a bit gimpy. We saw him have a breakout game against the Hawthorne Cougars, and boy, he's got going, and we'll get a chance to see him early in this one. Mano Sakona hands the ball straight up the middle to Rogers. Rogers goes around the right side, the left side, the far side, and gets about eight yards on that one, Rufus, and it goes up to about the 45 yard line, where it's going to be second down. And, uh, well, the As we watch guys the running the chains Luke. are having a little bit of trouble, so it'll be second down and short. And on the replay, the fans can see Rogers turn around the left side, got tripped up by the ankle, had a good head of steam going, and you can't tell if this is close enough that they're gonna take a measurement, and it looks like they are measuring over. Well, no, they aren't they, from where they placed the ball. They have to move the, the chains back because the original line of scrimmage was the 37-yard line, and uh, unless they moved it, up to the 40. Well, it certainly looked like he got more than five yards on the play, but maybe he went out, out of bounds over on the far side as he turned it up. Talk about Friday the 13th. We'll call it second and five, and uh, they're just going to say the line of scrimmage was the 40. Sakona hands the ball off to Rodgers again, tries to bounce out to the near side, but couldn't do it as he was caught by the shoestrings. And a nice play by the Sea King defense. It'll be third down and six. Excellent play by the Sea King defense. That defense, of course, led by uh, Ryle Jade, who has 47 tackles on the season, and Nick Pisano, who comes into the night's contest with seven sacks on the season. He's tied with Daniel Levitai for the lead in the Bay League. 9.30, clock is running. One setback. Is a man in motion now for the Olympians. Big third down play, hand off to Rodgers. Rodgers on the draw play, tries to get to the 50 yard line. And let's see where the spot is. It looks like it could be a favorable spot, Rufus, and it is a first down. Well, that's good for the Olympian effort. Again, they've, uh, having had some struggles with the kicking game, they need to pick up as many first downs as they can. Of course, they want to answer that early touchdown score by the Sea Kings and, and even this one up as quickly as possible. That's right, maybe they can get a nice drive and take some time off the clock. It's Rodgers again. Rodgers gets caught right at the line of scrimmage and is pulled back for very little gain. If he got back to the line of scrimmage, he's fortunate. So it'll be second down and 10. Another one of the big studs on defense for the Sea Kings is number 70, Joey Esposito. He's uh, 6'4", 268 pounds. Talked to Coach Patrick Fresh about that, and he says, yeah, we're growing big down here. Yeah, he's got a couple of big guys. Also is Sean Lustin. Lustin, he's 6'3", 280. Sakona back to pass. Can't find anybody open, and so he takes off. And now Manu is gets past the 30-yard line and is finally shoved out of bounds at about the 25. That's a 25-yard gain for the big guy who was tried to, they tried to tackle him for a loss but couldn't do it, and he was off to the races. Sakona is a hard guy to bring down. We know he's weighs in at over 250 pounds, and he's not the kind of guy that you can arm tackle. He's listed at 6'4", 250. As the Sea King line was in there right away, didn't give Mano any time to find a receiver. Secondary had him covered pretty well. Screen pass, wide receiver screen pass, and it is going to go backwards. That would take too long to develop, Lou. That was a problem there. I mean, as we sit and watched it here, 
Uh, it looked like it was stuck in molasses, and when he <laughs> swung it out to the left side, the um, defensive, the right side of the Palos Verdes defense swarmed to the play right away. I think it was an, it should have been an incomplete pass. It bounced uh, before it even hit Hodrick's hands. Can we see that again? Uh, there, there you see Mano Sakona. Hey, Tom, I wonder if we could see that again. I think they're waving it off. Well, they waved it pass. off, but the point of discussion was whether or not it was a lateral, as we'll see here. And it was. You can see that the ball went forward. Mm -hmm. Now, the rule is if that ball it's had nice been short behind the line of scrimmage, that would have been a loose and fair ball, and he, and he could have made a play with it. But the ball did go forward across the line of scrimmage, makes it an incomplete pass. Tight end comes in motion to the near side. And the ball is pitched to Mark Rogers. Rogers cuts back inside, is hit, gets away from one, two, and the third man catches him, but not before a, a six yard gain. And it'll be third down and four for the Olympians on the six yard run by Rogers. Rogers is a small guy, but he runs like a big guy. And, and I say that, you know, I mean, it's no secret about his size. You look at him, you can see that. And you would think when you first see him that he's the kind of guy, one pop, and he's going to go down. And as you can see, he takes two or three hits, and he does this week in and week out before he's actually brought down. That's the first contact there. You see him completely break away from that contact, breaks away from the second contact. Third guy, actually, the third contact is what brings him down. And now let's see which way the ball is going to go on this one. If Lusinger will get the first down because of an offside, or they'll go back five yards. It's going to go against Lusinger. Somebody moved. And on that run, Rufus, the first move that uh, Rogers made was against Ryle Jade. So one of the better defenders in the Bay League, and he just went right around him. Just made a little jitterbug move. 5'9", 190 pounds. Generously yeah. listed That's at 5'9". That's a nice lightning nine. up back there. That's right, yeah, generously, yeah. uh-huh. I think I might be 6'1", if he's really 5'9". Right. Back to pass is Sakona, and it is not picked off, as Daniel Levitai was the intended receiver. I think he got away with a little push off of Steve Pizzella. And in this Losinger offense, would it be in a fourth and 10, and the ball right now is spotted at the 24-yard line. I think they're going to go fourth and nine, let's call it. I think they're going to yeah. go for this. Got a bit of a problem because the guy on the side with the down mark is not lining up with, the, um, with where the ball actually is placed, and that's his responsibility. But the Olympians are going to go for it. Let's see what happens. All right. Let's see if losing their offense can do it. Manasakona back to pass, is caught by Monroe Ross, goes up the middle, and is just tripped up at the last second inside the 10-yard line, or he would have had six. Great play by the Olympians to get that first down on the fourth down. And what's interesting about that play, they don't call it, well, but that's about as close as you can get to a crackback block. If you look at it, let's watch the replay here from this angle. We're in kind of tight. We'll see if, we, if it comes out. And there you see, you saw the edge of the block there. No call by the official, but boy, that's pretty close. So we're going to call that a 20 yard reception from Sakona to Ross. Sakona had over 400 yards passing and two touchdowns in the game against Shure. So In one game? Yeah, well, that's what the uh, coach told me. Lusinger hadn't had 400 yards passing in five seasons. That's what one of the coaches told me. Yeah, Sakona's good. If he down. did, that's, that's outstanding. That's certainly, and I, I say that as someone who's watched a lot of Olympian football, but that's great. That's a new leaf in this program. If, it's, if it is indeed the truth. Because, well, <laughs> I think Friday the 13th has gotten has gotten inside a coach's head. Okay. Because if Mark Rogers gained 300 yards or so rushing, that's, that's a, a lot of pass yards. That's a lot of yards. 400. Well, he had two touchdowns, that's for sure. Check me out there. All right. I'm not going to check you out. I'm going to just see. 
Five minutes, 32 seconds left to go. It's first and goal from the five yard line. Full house backfield, Rogers gets it and is hit hard as he hits the line of scrimmage. Maybe no gain on the play as Rogers was hit immediately by that big front line of the Sea Kings. Olympia is looking to respond and they're doing it very methodically here. The one thing that happens, and this is good actually for their defense, defense getting a, a huge rest because the Olympians have had the ball since the 11.02 mark here in the first quarter, so they've had it nearly six minutes. Ball goes to Rogers again. We have a penalty flag going right in the area of where a holding call might be. As Mickey Mance was in there on the tackle, one of the linebackers, cornerbacks. And this is one of those, this drive so far, Lou, is one of those oddities as we see the official David Batnock is the referee tonight. And let me take a moment while we've got the time to give you the rest of the crew. Let's watch the replay first as Mark Rogers heads into the middle. And I believe that's 45 who is, yeah, Ryle Jade. Jade, of course, one of the leading tackler on this team as well as the leading receiver. Shot of Coach Deion Tolliver there as he looks at his team facing a second and goal from out at the 15 yard line now. Obviously a passing down and uh, well, not so obvious, but there's two receivers to the near side, one to the far side, Rogers, the lone setback, and yeah, they pitch it to Rogers to the short side, stutters his way, but can't find any running room. And the Sea Kings are really, really looking for that number five coming at them. Well, it looks like the Sea Kings have made a commitment early on to not letting Mark Rogers beat them. Now they've contained him thus far here in the first quarter. However, that's a tall task to do for an entire game because here's what we know. Rodgers with 1,012 yards rushing on the season on just 103 carries, is averaging 9.8 a carry and has scored nine touchdowns, which is the second most touchdowns in all of the South Bay high schools, not just the Bay League. Big third down and 15, third and goal from the 15. Sakona goes into the corner for the Touchdown pass, but left put a little bit too much air under that one, Rufus, and Monroe Ross had to play jump ball with the Sea King re, uh, defensive crew out there. That pass intended for Monroe Ross, I think again. Now this is gonna be an interesting decision. Looks like the Olympians are setting up. Are they gonna show kick here? Now the Rafael Reyes is coming on to attempt a 32 yard field goal. Kick this it. one is up, it is high enough, long That's enough, great. and it is good. Kicking it with the wind. So, a lot of time is ticked off the clock, Rufus, and they need to stop that clock because it's scored. Yeah, and, it is definitely uh, a clock issue. Yes, but it, it's seven to three now. 32 yard field goal by Reyes. Who, whoever's running the clock has absolutely no idea what they're doing. I, you know, I hate to say it, but it's the reality. The clock should have been stopped 15 seconds ago. You're right, you're absolutely right. They should add on another 15 seconds. I mean, they did that at the opening of the game. Now this is your hometown clock, mind you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean you, you expect this kind of treatment. Coach Fresh over at Palace Verde is just saying, hey guys, you can Thank run you. it all night yeah. if you want to. As long as we I've got, got the lead. I've got a 7-3 lead. Yeah, as long mm -hmm. as I got the lead. But it's seven to three and uh, that drive took Almost seven minutes, Rufus. Well, it certainly did. It started at the 11 minute mark and it ran down to the three and a half. In fact, it took seven and a half minutes. As the kickoff is made by Alex Hodrick, but this is, goes out of bounds. And it'll be first and 10 for the Sea Kings. Or are they going to kick it over again? It looks well, like they're going to the kick Sea it Kings over. I think the Kings will take it at the 35-yard line. If I were them, that's what I'd do. Yeah, they're going to make him kick it over. Well, sometimes you well, can get a little bit greedy. Because it's an offside, greedy. that's why. Yeah. So they have to kick it over. It's an offside against 
Lusinger, so they kick it off from the 35 yard line. And yeah, also we had a, a casualty on the spirit squad. One of the cheerleading crew fell onto the track and let's hope that she's okay. Well, we did see a good sign. We, we, we saw uh, the paramedics come and leave the arena without, without uh, taking her with them. And so that was a very good sign. Wagoner gets the kickoff return, dropped it, picked it back up and comes up to about the 32 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Sea Kings. And we'll call that the uh, 32 yard line with 3-11 left to go in the first quarter. And Sea Kings with the lead at seven to three. Again, the losing your special teams, giving Tritnowski and this Palace Verdes Sea Kings team excellent field position, or pretty good. We won't call this excellent, but it's good field position to say the least. As here comes the running back Solar again, and Solar is picked up this time. Is the only other offensive player that the Sea Kings have had was a 62-yard touchdown run. Yeah, you know, this is one of those times when you get the weird time of possession statistic. Losing your head time of possession for seven and a half minutes. Palace Verdes has had the ball for about 45 seconds, but they lead seven to three. That's right. Now let's see what the flag is. Uh, we have a, an illegal block for clipping. So this is going to go back a ways. Oh, boy. Oh, we got some thunder and lightning going on up in the foothills. So the three-yard gain turns into a big 15-yard loss. I don't because like to disagree with you, but I think that's a little bit closer than the foothill. I think it's over by Inglewood. It's right here <laughs> near us. Yeah. Oh, so. no. So, fans, my visit with you may be shortened considerably. <laughs> yeah. are, are you yeah. afraid of the North Carolina kid who probably used to see all that thunder and lightning there? Haven't seen it in 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, God used to get real close to us in Illinois. Screen pass, complete. Good defense as Casey Carboneau made the reception, but better defense by the Olympians. By Monroe Ross and Kavanga, Una Kavanga, out there in the open field to make that tackle. That was a good open field tackle. That's what we talked about. They've got three or four options over there that they'll throw it to. That was their first pass of the game. That's right. So let's see if Trudnowski gets things going. Now he has three trips to the right, one receiver to the left, to the near side, one running back. One step drop, another screen pass on the right side, and another good defensive play on that side by Ona Kavenga. And that one was to David Oberlander, I believe. Or was that Folletti? Andrew Folletti with the reception. Got maybe two yards out of it. That was actually, well, it would appear that that was Aranda, Adam Aranda, number two, with their reception. Aranda, okay. one of the three uh, receiving options that they'll likely go to in tonight's contest. Big third down and 18 yards to go, Rufus. Three receivers to the near side. Trudnowski throws over the middle, is caught, tackled, but is hit once, I should say, but didn't go down. That was the big tight end, Spencer Olson. And what you said was key. He was hit, but he wasn't tackled. He was hit by Kavanga, but Kavanga didn't tackle him, didn't wrap him up. You hear coaches say it all the time, you gotta wrap him up. He hit him. Watch, watch the hit right here. Then we'll talk about the other thing that the Sea Kings did on this play. Looks like the pass might have been tipped. There's the hit right there, though, in the back, but there's no tackle. Actually, that was uh, Matt Templin, one of the running backs. So about an eight-yard gain, and it's going to be punted away by Graham Balin. 
Nice high spiral kick, and it's fumbled, and the Olympians get it back. Monroe Ross had it go off of his uh, pads, and boy, his, uh, his guys helped him out there. Oh, they certainly did. Yeah. Now, that was a good special teams play as, the, as his own coverage unit got down there, his blockers looking to get in position for him, so they were there to make the play for him. Two Olympians there, number 12 and number 21. May as well give them a kudos. That was Cartier Davis along with Dijon Clark. Davis 21, Clark 12. Lusinger's ball at their own 33-yard line. It'll be first and 10 there with 16 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Two receivers to the near side. Pitch goes to Rodgers. Rodgers gets around one man, gets a nice block to the 42-yard line and about a nine yard gain and a terrific clearing block by one of the wide receivers. It might've been Monroe Ross. Once again, the clock, the clock losing time. I got it. Now they give uh, Rogers a 10 yard gain. So a first down for losing her. They, they're moving the ball, that's for sure. Now the uh, First quarter comes to an end. They should actually put another minute on the clock. Well, you nearly could with the way it was run. This will be interesting to see. You know, it, we, we, we look at every aspect of the game. And this is one aspect that as we get down near the end of this contest, and depending on how competitive it still is, it'll make a difference to see this lost time and what a factor it might be in the outcome of this game. Well, the story of this game so far, and it has kind of been, been a weird game, kind of a black cat kind of game uh, with the Friday the 13th and spooky thunder and lightning, uh, almost a Halloween night type of atmosphere as uh, the opening play of the game was a 62-yard run by Derek Soler. And the 5'10", 170-pound senior, the, took the first play all the way to the house to make it seven to nothing for the Sea Kings. And then on a long drive, the, Rafael Reyes kicked a 32 yard field goal to tighten up the score seven to three and that's really been it. Also the second uh, secondary story has been the clock keeper or the timekeeper. It, it really truly has been. Well, we just got some uh, uh, word of that there's a little bit of rain out there. And Losinger is about ready to start the second quarter from the 44 yard line. So let's give Mark Rogers an 11 yard gain on that last run. Well, they gave him a first down, that's for sure. And a handoff. About five yards on the play. Mark Rogers again. It's just been Rogers except for that one. Broken play where Mano Sacona ran for 25 yards and a first down. And what happens is you keep hitting this defense with Rodgers and keep hitting them with him, and sooner or later, something has to give. And we've already seen it give one or two times, and Rodgers obviously can pop the big one at any time. Second down and five for the Olympians at the 48-yard line, we'll call it. Sakona pitches the ball to Rogers, slips across midfield, and it might be getting a little slick out there with a little bit of rain as Ryle Jade was there to make him go inside. Let's go down to Charity. Guys, yesterday I spoke with Coach Tolliver about opening up the league game against Palos Verde. He said, you know what, Charity, this game is not going to be a walk in, a, in the park. He said it's going to be an all-out battle. He said the, um, that Palos Verde has, is a power team. He says that they have a lot of strength at quarterback. He said in order to wear them down, because they play both ways just like his players, he said they're going to have to wear them down early. He said they're going to have to capitalize at every chance. He said, let's face it, this is a strong league. He said people don't come to this league or teams don't come to this league to play soft. He said everybody knows that this is a stronger league. He said they play fundamentals and we have speed. He said so we're going to have to incorporate fundamentals into our speed to take a win home on tonight. Back to you. Thank you very much, Charity. And a 12-yard gain by Mark Rogers. And it's a first down 
it deep inside of Seeking territory with 10, 19 clock running in the second quarter. An important first down pickup by Rogers because they were in that part of the field. If they hadn't got the first down, they definitely would have had to kick it away. Hand off to Rogers again, and he extends himself for a nice gain of about five yards again. And the tackle was made by Amin Mumand. Rogers again starting to get untracked, and what I'm seeing is that this Palos Verdes defense is getting soft up with, softened up, I should say, with each and every running play. And you can just about see the big one on the horizon. Rogers comes off for a breather, and coming in to replace him will be number two, and of course, that's Mark Quentin Mitchell. Mark Quentin will hit the hole. And some fresh legs, and you talk about a little fire hydrant of a guy. 5'9", 190 pounds, and he is uh, put together, that's for sure. Also has that big Cheshire Cat grin. Right. And he gets about three yards. So it'll be third down and about two. Another guy that they have out there offensively, Lou, is Ralph Horton. Of course, we know Raf from the basketball season, and they got Raf at tight end. He's a huge target at 6'7". I'm a little surprised that they don't see him more, but he's used principally as a blocker, uh, more so than a uh, receiving tight end or a receiving option. Well, let's see if M Mitchell got the necessary two yards. They're eyeballing it right now, and they're gonna, gonna have a measurement right now. Clock still running. They signal to God. <laughs> there we go. That was only about four seconds off there. And yeah, let's see if uh, Mark Rogers is just taking a rest. Yeah, he's back out in the huddle now. And, and one reason the clock issue isn't being addressed, I'm not sure the, that, 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 that Coach Tolliver is, is yet aware of it because he understands what it means to his own team. But Palos Verdes isn't complaining in the least bit, and they won't complain until they're behind. Now, once they're behind and you keep seeing these errors, they're going to bring it to the attention of the officials. And the officials' min mindset is that if it's the home field clock. And it's a first down. So Mitchell comes in and gives Rodgers a couple of plays off and uh, gets the necessary four or five yards gets for the first down. Picks up the first down. Olympians have had two big third down plays where they've picked up the first, and that was good. We saw Rodgers do it earlier, and as I said, his was a key pickup. So Rodgers back in there, full house backfield with Kavienga and Levitai. As there's no secret on this one, well, you never know. They might throw out of this formation, but uh, you got Ten people in the on the box there as Rogers hits the hole and Rogers goes for the corner touchdown Losinger a 28 yard scamper by Mark Rogers at the 8:15 mark and that gives the Olympians the lead but uh, let's see what the flag is or is there a flag oh doesn't appear that there's nope. one in fact there's no uh, there isn't but the good thing about that. As, as we talked about was, and as I mentioned, we saw them softening up that defense and then that full house set, wishbone set in the minds of some people, made famous by Oklahoma. Reyes with a nice Reyes PAT. extra point kick's looking good. Yeah, that field goal was not yeah. bad either. He's been out and, there uh, practicing. So that touchdown, that 28 yard run, as you say, by, as we see the replay, by Mark Rogers gives the Olympians the lead at 10 to seven. Seven play drive. There Six. you see the lead block right there. That was a block that set him free. That was Levitai. Le Levitai gave the block that sprung him and Rogers did the rest. But excellent teamwork by the Olympians. Seven play drive took four minutes and 15 seconds. Rogers capping it off with a 28 yard run. And yeah, that little rest by Mark Quinton Mitchell was the tonic. And uh, boy, he just, he just kind of figured with that full house backfield that they were just gonna try to plow through the Sea Kings and said, you know, we've had enough of this. And now it's 10 to seven Olympians with the lead. Their first lead of the game. 
10 unanswered points by Losinger as they've put on two impressive drives. They kept that, what they did, what both of those drives did was it kept the Sea King defense on the field a long time. Hodrick and conversely kept Trudnowski off the field. Wagner has it, was the lone return man and gets it up to about the 32 yard line. So now the special teams of Losinger, they're fired up too. They're fired up, getting a little bit better. Uh, 30 at the 32 yard on that return, not bad. As we see here, the return by Palace Verdes. Special team starts to come inside on it. Again, their good open field tackle going for the legs. And then once they slow him down, the rest of the posse gets there. So Rogers is piling up the yards again. I would say he's close uh, to on the 100 yard mark already as out of the shotgun. Well, Jud he came Nowski. into tonight's contest averaging 202 per game. Trudnowski handed the ball off to Andrew Folletti. And Folletti didn't get anything. So it'll be second and 10. Folletti got filleted. <laughs> Good play by the defensive line of Losinger. That's one of the things that Coach Fresh of the Sea Kings was talking about. He says, they got some big guys over there. They said, yeah, but that's yeah. just the quarterback. <laughs> and that was it. You're right. He, he has his own share of big guys. <laughs> and he's not too small a fella himself. That's right. The <laughs> former uh, Arizona State Sun Devil, Trudnowski. Completes the screen pass. It's going to be good enough for a first down along the far sideline. So that's just the first first down for the Sea Kings. And what you can expect to see now that they're behind is that Vonta passing game that we talked about earlier. Nice pass by Trudnowski. And now you can see why these uh, scouts and coaches are really salivating over this guy as the pass was completed to number 24. Matt Templin. Trudnowski almost sacked, yeah. but it was handed wow. off. And a three yard gain on the play. And Fidletti takes a huge hit for his troubles. So it's gonna make it a, well, we have to look at the sideline market. Scoreboard still having some problems for the Olympians. Clock running, 6.18 left to go. Second down and six for the Sea Kings. Out of the eye. One ride receiver, double tight end set. Trudnowski under center. Hands the ball off to the fullback, Folletti. Folletti trying to burrow his way through, gets to midfield, and that's about it. Gaining about three yards. It'll be third down and about three to go. Folletti coming into the night's contest, as you see him there on your screen, actually the third leading rusher for this team. Their leading rusher is Adam Wagner. We haven't called his name much tonight. Solar, of course, with the 62-yard scamper for the touchdown to open the contest. And Folletti, last couple of drives, has gotten most of the work. Big third down play on defense for the Olympians. Third and three for Trudnowski has three wide receivers on the near side, but the ball is going to be handed off and maybe enough for a first down. It appears that the running back did get there as that was Derek Soler. And he did get a first down, down to the 45 yard line of Losinger. Well, right now this game has become a chess match and it's been one from the very beginning as Coach Fresh's team have thrown a couple of curves at the Olympians in terms of uh, their preponderance toward the run and what was expected to be a, a passing affair for them. Good tackle by Daniel Levitai to wrap him up that time. As a running play again, but nothing. ends. a fumble, maybe. Let's see if he was down. I didn't hear the whistle blow until after the ball came out. Looks like they still have it. You don't see the Olympians claiming that it's theirs. So, can't be a fumble by contact with the ground. 
Bit of rain starting to come down. So it'll be second Here. down and uh, we'll call it 10. Yeah, you can see the rain against the lights, that's for sure. As Trudnowski, second down and nine plus. Trudnowski almost yeah. gets his head taken off by Ona Kaveenga. Oh my goodness, where did yep. he come from? Well, he burst right up the middle on him and uh, Tretnowski found himself not with enough time to make a, to even dish the ball off. And so he ends up having to take a huge sack of five yards on the play. That's not uh, fuzz on your television set, that's rain. Remember that stuff? It's wet, little drops fall out of the sky. People can't we drive in it here? Can't drive in it, we don't see it often, but hey, Football's a bad weather sport, and so the game will go on. So a big sack makes it third down and 15 with 3.20 left to go in the half. Little sideline screen, and now falling on the ball is Vining. Not taking any chances as the Olympian defense wanted to grab it in case it was called a lateral. And again, not, not a clear signal by the officials as we see it here. They ran the triples to the right. And in fact, that was a lateral because it was behind the line of scrimmage. That's why the ball was loose, and Called you didn't see an incompletion in indication by the officials. So another five-yard loss. So yeah, they didn't hear the whistle. So it's fourth down and 20. And Monroe Ross will be back to receive the punt from Graham Balin. Balin. Had a nice punt the last time. Monroe Ross wants to call for a fair catch, but it bounces at about the 20 yard line. And a little bit of uh, posturing by some blockers out there. And it'll be first and 10 for Losinger. Should be. Well, they, call, they mark it at the 15. I thought it was okay. Well, it took a bit more of a bounce, but from the 15, gives them two minutes and 28 seconds to negotiate 85 yards. That's if the clock guy doesn't uh, <laughs> keep that thing running on him here. We're going to go to Charity Bailey after this play as Sakona has two running backs behind him, and I believe he handed it off to the first guy, and that was Mark Rogers, who gets up off the bottom of the pile for a one-yard gain. Let's go down to Charity. All right, guys, somehow you guys always tend to come out on the better end of the stick. I always get the short end. I'm down here in the rain, and we are playing some football big time. Now, during pregame, when we talked to Coach Fresh from Powell's Verde, he, I asked him how he planned to contain this, uh, this offense and the defense. He said, you know what? My quarterback is going to have to step up. My front line is going to have to step up because he said their defensive front is big. He said they're impressive. He said this is a really impressive team. He said they're big, they're fast, they're strong. And, oh, yeah, did I mention they're fast? So since it's raining and Luzinger is a team of speed, we're going to watch how they work this out in the rain because speed and water don't really work well. But I think they can figure it out. What do you think? I think that was almost a terrific catch by Cartier Davis at the 50-yard line as the ball was thrown very nicely by Manu Sakona, who's turned into a terrific quarterback here. Absolutely. That was a good-looking pass, Lou. I mean, that was as good a pass as I've seen because uh, Sakona throw as we watch the replay here. As it looked on the money, we, we see the replay. Boy, he lays it out there perfectly. Got two guys. That's what you call a drop. Yep, he just dropped it. And that's too bad because that was would have been a nice gain here as Sakona gets pitches it off to Rogers. Rogers. And now we have uh, possibly a holding call as the referee throws the, the uh, penalty flag after a gain of about seven yards. Now, what you got was an illegal block on a push in the back, it would appear. What is it called? Referee, of course, is David Batnock. <laughs> Not quite sure we see it at that stage of the replay. Coach Dion Tolliver looking in on it, trying to get a better understanding of the, of the official's call. Now, there's a minute, 12 seconds left on the clock. It's a fourth and, well, once nine, they spot ten, it. 
Now they say it's incomplete. With no foul, and this is going to force the Olympians into a punting situation. Another special teams play. Boy, Palos Verdes with a minute 12 left could get the ball with a very, very short field. I think what happened was, Rufus, is that the Sea Kings declined the penalty, forcing the punt. So Hodrick will punt the ball away. And yeah, they'll have a good minute to uh, try to get the ball back in the end zone. And now a timeout is called by the Sea Kings. Well, we certainly know that time is not a factor in a scoring drive for them. Uh, either way, one, because, they, because they've shown that they've got a pretty good run and attack, and secondly, uh, we also know that they can pass the ball effectively. Now, I don't know what Charity's complaining about. My leg is a little wet here, my knee, you know, because the wind's kind of blowing the rain in underneath our uh, get uh, easy up here. Right. So, and, you know, look at my look at my uh, Sea Kings roster. It looks like it was in the sea. So, it, you know. We're, it's we're a still weather beaten night too. In Lawndale. <laughs> oh, I think it's raining all over the world. Speaking of Losinger, we had the opportunity to go to UCLA basketball media day on Wednesday and saw our old buddy Rufus or uh, uh, Russell Westbrook, <laughs> who uh, said to say hello to Rufus. He said, "Yeah, actually, he said, well, where's Rufus? You guys are always together." I tell you, Russell's certainly an outstanding player for the Olympians, uh, for Coach Reggie Morris, following in a tradition that he's built in the last four years of developing excellent young players. Hodrick kicks the ball, takes a nice losing or bounce, and they will down it at the 38-yard line with 56 seconds left to go and 62 yards for the Sea Kings to go, but heck, they can get that in one play. They can, but that was, again, a good special teams play, and I'm impressed. I keep emphasizing the point because it has been one of the weaknesses in the Olympian program, but tonight, with the exception of an early miscue, the kicking game has actually come through pretty well. Sure has. Reyes uh, really coming on, the former soccer player, has looked very, very good tonight. I guess we had to wait for him to be born and grow up because we sure <laughs> waited enough years for there to be a kicker around here. Yeah. That's right. You sure, certainly have. As now the handoff is to Wagner. Wagner's going again. Wagner goes out of bounds at about the 37 yard line. So a big gain for the Sea Kings and another big run again from that 38 yard line. Big gain for the Sea Kings and. And once again, we talked about how this losing her defense was being kept off balance tonight by the Sea King team. And actually, that was Solar, number 20, in our program with that carry. Solar, of course, from the very same spot as you mentioned early on, did have the 62 yard carry, nearly duplicated it. So, Solar with a 24 yard run. Makes it first and 10, and we have a timeout. Is that an official's timeout, Rufus? It was an official's timeout, you know. And this is what we thought would happen. Now, here's the interesting thing that's going to happen. They're coming over. There's a clock issue. If you notice, I said in the first quarter, mm -hmm. as long as Palace Verdes was, 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 was in the league, they weren't going to complain about the clock. And now you know, they're down by But now that they're behind, points. they legitimately, and, and it's, I mean, they're, they're doing what they're entitled to do. They're raising the point that there's a clock issue. That's right. So first down and 10 from the 38-yard line after the 24-yard run by Solar. And the scoring started off real quick. First offensive play of the game was a 62-yard run by Solar and almost got away again just now. Then Reyes tighten things up with a 32-yard field goal, a real nice-looking one. And then Mark Rogers with a beautiful 28-yard run to make the score 10-7 to to give losing her a lead here at home, something that they haven't enjoyed all that much. And now they've got to reset the clock by letting it run down. They don't have an electronic clock here, a digital clock, where you can just key in what the time is. So we'll sit and watch them run it down. 
When that happens, what you got to hope for is that the guy stops it at the right spot. Otherwise, you got to start all the way over again. You know? Okay. Well, they, it's uh, 40 seconds, so they're. And it was at 27, so that was right. 13 seconds. Coach Patrick Fresh noticed that, hey, you guys took 13 seconds from us. Trudnowski get, trying to get away from Kavienga again, has to throw it on the run, just get rid of it, because also running up his shirt was Blaine Roberts. Good pursuit by Losinger. And losing her right now, hollering for an intentional grounding, saying there wasn't a receiver in the area of the pass. Clock still. Hey, ref, you suck. No, it's not the refs. It's the, yeah. the guy that's pushing the button down on the clock. So it should be second down and 10. So now we've got a whole lot of issues going on with the numbers. Boy, it's Friday the 13th as far as the numbers go. It's Friday the 13th as far as the numbers go. Uh, the referee's being real tolerant right now of the uh, clocks, of the timekeeping mistakes being made by this losing your timekeeper. Out of the shotgun, Trudnowski has to get away from Kavienga again and throws it into the ground. And that one might have been an intentional grounding because it might have hit one of the linemen. Well, now that's that's a that's a late flag coming mm -hmm. in. Let's see what that is. Half of an intentional ground. Yep. And the intentional grounding against Trudnowski and the Sea Kings. So Losinger and Wona Kavienga, especially, has just been uh, tearing in there. It certainly has, and that'll be a loss of down uh, as well on the play. Again, we got to use a sideline marker. We may as well give a plug for a sponsor who's, who, who would like to help out the Olympian football effort. Quite frankly, the school, and, and they've said this in the past, so we aren't making a joke of it. it it's serious. Um, this scoreboard here is, is ancient, to say the least, and I'm sure if there's someone out in the viewing audience, particularly a local business, that's looking for a way to support the Losinger Olympian football program, and they'd like to invest or be a part of an investment group in, uh, in putting a new scoreboard here on the field. We've got a new track here. It's this track beautiful. has a beautiful track yeah. surface, and some work has been done on the field over the years, and it's starting to pay off, and right now, I can tell you that the scoreboard is one of the final pieces of work that needs to be done. And there's a whole lot of wall over there to make a real nice one. And you've got uh, the uh, pole vaulting pits and the long jump pits, triple jump pits, they're all new. That's all looks like tartan surface as well as the, uh, the shot put and discus throwing areas and the, and the, uh, the high jump area. So, this is just uh, turning into a really nice facility here in Lawndale. So it looks like it's a third and 17 coming up now for the Sea Kings. With 25 seconds left, the clock is running. Blitz for the losing Olympians, and now a fly pattern, a little timing pattern down the sideline, and that's incomplete. And so now the Olympians have an opportunity to get the ball back with 18 seconds. Not real good clock management that time by the Palos Verde Sea Kings as it's going to be fourth and 17, and they clearly are going to need to punt this one away to the Olympians. Steven Perez was the intended receiver, and Mark Rogers was on the coverage, and Rogers... Well, the clock shouldn't be running on it. No, it shouldn't be. Now the uh, referee whistles it. And again, that was a loss of four seconds. There are 18 seconds on the clock. At this point, they just might as well keep time on the field. So Monroe Ross is up pretty far. He's up at the 30-yard uh, line. And what the side judge there, Coach Tolliver said something to a side judge, said, hey, Coach, it's your timekeeper. I mean, don't <laughs> get out of my ear. <laughs> Okay, so they're going to add another 20 on the clock. I think they're going to so put. Here we go again. Yeah, they're going to put six seconds back on. So now we got to sit here and watch 54 seconds of our life go by. Okay. Well, let's make good use of it. Lou, what can right. we talk about? Well, let's see. Uh, Charity's hair is uh, going to be messed up by this weather. We've already heard about that. 
Um, I don't worry about that anymore. Um, the Olympian flame is burning brightly. And uh, it's Friday the 13th. It's Friday the 13th. And the Bay League, when we talk about the Bay League, the contenders in the Bay League are Miracosta, Peninsula, and Losinger. West, who's currently atop the Bay League, they had an excellent preseason. They went 4-0-1. Uh, they're considered to be a pretender by the Daily Breeze. But these losing Olympians right. are put in there as one of the main contenders for this Bay League Championship of 2006. Now nobody's really going for a return here, as it's a fake, and a nice fake, as it's complete. And a first down. And that'll stop the clock. As that one was completed to Adam Wagner. And was that Mickey Mance throwing the <laughs> ball? So, Tolliver, Coach Tolliver was uh, was right on and not having anybody there for the return. But it's a first down as the trick play works, even though the de defense was there defending it. Short snap taken by the up man. Set play all along. Olympians weren't, pre weren't prepared for that. Monroe Ross in on the tackle along with number 10, Sakona. So that was a 22-yard pass play from Mance to Wagoner. And Charity Bailey is ready down on the field. All right, guys. Now, before that last play, Coach Tolliver was on the sideline yelling to his guys, watch the fake, watch for the fake. He told them to get in position because he knew that they were going to fake. Now, during pregame, when I talked to Coach Fresh, I asked him, did they, did they run many trick plays? And he told me, he said, we really haven't had to so far this year. He said, so we'll see. And as you see, they pulled a trick play out of their bag. So you got to be watching for that. Back to you. Yeah, why not with uh, less than a minute left to go? And uh, yeah, Losinger knew it by not putting Monroe Ross back. And now Trudnowski going for the fade pattern, but just a little bit too far towards the end zone for his receiver. And that was Raul Jade. And they've stretched this, you know, the clock shows 11. When they got the ball, it was a minute 12 seconds. Of course, that was about 20 minutes ago <laughs> um, that, that this minute and 12 seconds has taken. So it's second down and 10 from the 24 yard line. 11 seconds left to go. Let's see how many passes Trudnowski can get in. I think they can get at least two plays here. They Go keep the running ball. that fade pattern. Go for that fade pattern again, and Mark Rogers didn't even turn around. It's complete, or is it incomplete? It was incomplete. incomplete. It's gonna be four. Same pass, just in. a little fade route to Jade. From where they are, they're at the 23. Back seven would be 30. This would be a 40-yard field goal attempt. Doesn't look like they're going to try to. Well, yeah, looks like they are going to set up for the field goal. And that would be Sean Ramsey, who also punts the ball. And now Losinger wants a timeout. Well, I think one of the things here, in addition, this isn't one of those deals, quite frankly, where you're going to ice the kick or anything like that. But I think what Coach Tolliver wants to tell his guys is to get them on point to be ready for a trick play. Yeah, you never know. They might do it again with five seconds left to go. Well, you play them for the trick play because you don't want to give up the seven. You know, sure. If the guy can make it, first of all, you, 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 you question yourself. You don't question yourself. You question whether or not your opponent can make a 40-yard field goal. So you say, okay. We'll let you take the attempt at it, but what we aren't going to give away, and that's what he's saying to his team, is that we're not going to give away not being alert for a trick play. Well, this is going to be a 40-yard field goal attempt by Sean Ramsey. With five seconds left on the clock, or is he going to kick it? As you can see, they've got a guy... Good block. Blocked. Block it ball by Monroe Rose. And now it's picked up. It's a live ball. And that'll end the half. But number one, Monroe Ross gets in and blocks that field goal attempt. 
Special teams all night, Lou, have come up big for the Olympians, and that's just yet another example as they're able wow. to take a 10-7 lead in. As we see Monroe Ross getting in to block that, that ball's live. You see the official running with it, looking to see what's gonna happen. Big number 51 for the Olympians. Went down to scoop it up, couldn't come up with it. Otis Jones. Otis Jones went for it, couldn't bring it in. If it, is it? All right. Otis Jones' brother says, of course he did it. It's my brother. But big Otis, all 6'2", 260 pounds of him, and he's only a junior. But uh, boy, what a, a, a nice laser shot of Monroe Ross as he came from the left side, untouched and just dove in and splattered that ball backwards. And the Olympians just miss a chance to get a score by scooping the ball up and returning it. And uh, it is halftime here at Olympian Field. And it's good news on Trixodexophobia night, October the 13th, Friday the 13th. 10 to seven, the Olympians lead the Sea Kings on the Bay League opener on Channel 22 Sports. Back before the third quarter kickoff, it is 10 to seven in favor of the Olympians. And uh, let me see here, Oop, I almost lost that thing here. That would have been tragic, my scorecard there. You know, it's always good to see some of the guys that uh, used to play around here at uh, Olympian Field. Chris William just walking by our booth and saying hello. And he's uh, free safety now for El Camino College. And uh, they are a rough bunch year in and year out. And uh, hopefully, Chris is going to move on uh, to a Big 12 school. You mentioned Iowa years. State as a possibility, yeah. and you're right. El Camino, first of all, it's a testament to how good a player you are to be a part of the program down there. They've been a perennial mm -hmm. power on the uh, on the junior on the junior college circuit for many years. I'm still hurting from a hit I took there, <laughs> as uh, from Fullerton College. Well, but I tell you, if you were down there running the clock, you'd be taking a couple of hits upside your head tonight. <laughs> From you, especially. Yeah. And uh, let's go over some of the numbers, the very unofficial statistics from our booth up here and our statistician. As uh, passing department, Andrew Trudnowski, only 4 out of 10 for just 24 yards. And he was also sacked a couple of times and uh, almost lost a lateral. And in the rushing department, Bowler, Derek Bowler, four carries for 93 yards and a touchdown. And one more thing, Manos Cone on the passing department, one out of four for 20 yards. And in rushing, Mark Rogers has 14 carries for 80 yards and one touchdown. Let's go down to Charity Bailey. All right, guys, we ended the first half on a high note with Monroe Roth blocking the field goal. Now, I talked to Coach Tolliver about what he talked to his guys um, with at halftime, and he told me, he said, you know what, we just got to play our game. He said, I told them to just keep playing their game. He said, stay focused and just be physical. He said, that's our game is being physical. So during the second half, they're going to come back out, play their game, and be more physical. Back to you. Well, it was a good, uh, again, a good first half for the Olympian special teams, of course. Ten points, a bit under the scoring margin that was expected. Max Preps had predicted that this would be a 28-14 win for the losing or Olympians, and, and they've got to get going. They've got to get going here. They did see, what we did see, though, was we saw through their ball control offense, and boy, they had the ball for, for it seems like, the entire first half. That's right. And, uh, and they gave him a healthy dose of Mark Rogers, and they kept hitting him with him and hitting him with him until uh, they finally solved him up, and he scored on that 28-yard touchdown run to give him the 10-7 lead. Ramsey addresses the ball and kicks it away from Rogers, and this is going to go to Monroe Ross. Ross gets away from one man. Look out. Gets up to the 40-yard line, and good field position to start off the second half for the Olympians. And with the lead, it's 10 to 7, and 11 minutes and 54 seconds left to go in the third quarter. So the Olympians, with the opening possession of the second half, 
It's more, more key than we sometimes realize. This is their opportunity to extend their lead and to take a little bit of wind out of the sails of the Sea Kings as they come out of the locker room looking to get back into it against this Bay League uh, contender, Bay League championship contender losing Olympian team. As Sakona almost sacked, gets away from one man, can't get away from the other as his intended receiver was covered downfield, Ralph Horton. Actually, that was Hodrick, Kevin Hodrick, as Sakona is sacked after by the second man that was going to come after him. The Sea King defense feeling pretty good about their effort on that play. Need to understand we've got a whole half to go, but I suppose I would as well as we watch the replay on that because they do drop Sakona for a five yard loss on the play. So it's second down and 15 from the 35. Rogers gets it, coming up the middle and gets four of the five yards back. So it'll be third down and I will call it five yard gain. It's a four yard gain. Close to four. So we'll call the line of scrimmage the 39 yard line as you see Rogers fighting his way up. As he always does, I mentioned that in the first half, that Rodgers is a kind of back, even though he's a small guy, he runs like a big back, and not just big in terms of height, but big in terms of power and size. Third and 11 for the Olympians. Sakona back to pass, look out. He's caught from behind again and drugged down. And you know the Sea Kings were in the locker room for quite a while, Rufus, I'm sure they were getting the wrath of big Patrick Fresh, their head coach. Well, they were, and what we're seeing there is, 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 is Sakona's decision making has to be a little bit quicker there in terms of, he, he, he felt tempted to run, you could almost see it in his feet, but he tried to stay with the pass, held on to it just a little bit too long, which gave the Sea the C King defense an opportunity to bring him down. Amin Momad hung on for dear life on that one as punting the ball, Alex Hodrick. And this one takes a losing or bounce. All the way to the 31 yard line and uh, all things considered, that was a pretty good kick for about a 10 foot kick. Well, you're exactly right, it was, I was gonna say. The ball hit the ground way back near the original line of scrimmage, but the trajectory on it had it spinning in, in the direction of the losing your locker room down toward the Olympian flame. And so what could have been a very bad situation for the Olympians works out pretty good as the Sea Kings take over at their own 31 yard line. As uh, well, and we can notch that one up to inertia. As Tronowski back to pass, throws it incomplete. He has just been out of alignment all night long. Has been, and one of the things that the Olympians are doing, Olympians are going man to man defense uh, with regard to their receivers instead of playing a zone or a nickel package, although they know that uh, this Palace Verdes team will put three receivers into the uh, pattern. And this ball is going to go back about 10 yards after the holding call. So Losinger's up front defensive line and their linebackers are wreaking havoc on this seeking offensive line with 9.23 left to go. And it's going to be first down and 20. Back to the 21 yard line of Palos Verdes. Bay League opener, Sakona looks like he's gonna blitz, now goes back into formation. The pass is complete for about eight yards, so they get uh, eight of them back as that one was completed to Casey Carbonell. Casey Carbonell on the reception, Cartier Davis with the hit, and that time, you know, you, you if you watch the game long enough, you'll see little things happen in terms of what players are doing. And that time, Cartier Davis with the hit and the wrap up on the receiver out in the open field. That was Trudnowski's first completion 
out of eight passes. So he had gone 0 for 8 after going 4 for 4. Trudnowski back to actually uh, hands the ball off on a delayed draw play, but Losinger is right there to gobble him up. Losinger is right there to gobble him up, and, and what we're seeing so far here in this first drive of the second half for Palace Verdes is that we're seeing that Coach Deion Tolliver's defense, which has always been the mainstay of his team so far in this season, really now starting to assert itself against the Palace Verdes team that had a pretty effective first half. In fact, to go into the locker room only down by a margin of 10 to seven. Eight minutes left to go in the third quarter. Third down and about 17 yards to go from the 25 yard line. If you're the Olympian defense, this is where you want to hold. Janowski back to pass on the slant is complete to Jade. And Jade gets across the 35 yard line, gets about 12 yards on the play, but it's still going to be fourth down and about four yards to go. Well, they gave a whole lot of it back. Fortunately, it was third and 17, because you're right. They gave about 13 of it back to them, but there was enough difference that they came up short. The losing their defense gets done what they needed to get done, and now Monroe Ross back to receive the punt. Well, let's see if uh, there's going to be trickery early this time. Down 10 to 7, Ramsey back in punt formation. That's not a well you want to go to twice because right now they're anticipating that. Monroe Ross is nowhere near this one as the ball is going to be down at about the 31-yard line. So Olympians will take over at their own 31-yard line with 6.53 left to go in the third quarter and a 10-7 lead. Quick moving third quarter, we might add. There have only been two possessions, one for each team, three and out for both squads, and the Olympians now looking to extend their lead. They got, they, I'm sure that Coach Tolliver and the rest of his crew realizes that a three-point lead against this Palace Verde team is a real slim margin, and that's not something you want to go to the bank with. Cartier Davis split wide to the right, but Mark Rogers slips and slides his way through for about a four yard gain, where it'll be second down and six. Gets up to the 35 yard line. So Mark Rogers still getting the work, the bulk of the work. Still getting the work and starting to see yeah, I know during, during the early part, well, in fact, during the summer when I had Coach Tolliver on Coach's clipboard, he wanted to open up the offense a little bit more. But I see that he's had Ooh, what would appear to be a ugly. change of thought. And Sakona pushed somebody out of the way, but. Uh, well, that was a busted play. Yeah, that's right. May as well call Daniel it what Levitai it was. And, and yeah. Mark Rogers and Sakona. All ran into each other in a Friday the 13th like play. Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. As <laughs> Daniel just couldn't get out of the way. And there we look at old Mano just pushing everybody around. Okay, so this one loses a yard, Rufus. Makes it a third and long. It's a third and about eight fans. In fact, it is third and eight. Back to the. 33 yard line as Sakona passes it long, has a man open, it's Hodrick, catches it at the 32, out of bounds at the 20, a big first down toss, Sakona to Hodrick. Kevin Hodrick with the big pass, and that takes him down to the 20 yard line. A 45 yard pass and catch. A beauty. That was nice as Hodrick was wide open. It was very nice, the defender for, and we'll see the, we'll watch the replay again as we see this pass laid out there. Wow, had his man beat. Had his man beat the Palace Verde defender number 24. That was Matt Templin, and of course we've called his name on the offensive side, but he got beat on that play. Sakona to pass again over the middle to Hodrick, uh, in and out of the hands. Uh, uh, is it intercepted? Yes, yeah. it is in the end zone, uh, touchback. 
and the Sea Kings will take over at their own 20 yard line and Kevin Hodrick has to be heartbroken. Well, once again, that Friday 13 bugaboo as we watch the replay again, Sakona drops back. We see him lay the pass up here and we thought, well, Hodrick had his hand on it and boy, he didn't come away with it. Instead, coming away with it for the Sea Kings was Robert Gregorio. As that ball was uh, right in his hands, in and out of the hands, and Sakona really had some mustard on that throw. Had some mustard on it, and once again, he didn't hold on to it, and the Sea Kings forced a turnover. Trudnowski under center has a man in motion to the near side, and the ball is handed off to that man, and it is Bowler, and Bowler it goes out of bounds. Or Solar, I should say. Solar. Not, not Bowler. Derek Bowler. Or Solar, I should say. I'm thinking Kyle Bowler. Now that flag was thrown out in the middle of the field, so it's not one of those. It's going to be a offsides, it looks like, to call against the illegal block, they're going to say, against Ballas Verdes. So that'll be a big one. Should go back to about the 10 yard line. So it'll be first down and 20 from the 10 yard line. Five oh five left to go. The Olympians leading this one 10 to seven. Cartier Davis wanting to know what the defensive signal is going to be. Mark Rogers also out there. Trudowski has a receiver to the near side. It's Casey Carboneau. Two receivers on the far side. One back behind him. Goes to the right, throws on a little slant. It's complete. Gets 10 yards back. And Mano Sakona really made him pay for the price of the catch there, because that was Jade. That was Jade with the catch, and it was Sakona with the hit. Excellent hit by Sakona. Jade looking to get away from the initial contact. But boy, Sakona comes in to really nail him on the second time around. Actually, that was Sakona's second contact on him, brought him down the second time. That's kind of a little bit of cruelty, isn't it? Right. <laughs> So I'll hit you on the other side. I got you on the left side here. Come around, I'll, I'll get you, give you a little kiss on the cheek over here. Out of the shotgun, Trudnowski hands the ball off on a delayed draw as Solar put on the brakes and slid on this slippery surface. Slippery field, but what they're doing, and I was about to, say, about to say this right before that play got underway, is that they're now making a more concerted effort to spread this losing our defense out. Yeah, the Lightning's getting a little closer here. And yeah. we're sitting on metal seats. Yep. Now that got... And we'll see what the referee has to say about that. I don't know what what's going to happen here, if they're going to continue play or not with the Lightning getting closer. Well, we got flags on the play. Too much time. Yeah. So. I think they'll give it one more good crack before, before, before they make that decision. We do know that clearly safety is always paramount and an issue, and the referees are instructed one during, during the league play that that you always take care of the safety issues first and foremost before anything else. So it'll be third down and 14 now. The ball goes back to the 16. So this has been a, a, a wild Friday the 13th here. Out of the shotgun, Trudnowski, a big third down play for him and also the defense. Here comes Kavienga. Misses him, but the ball is complete. Whoa. The ball is caught. And there goes Jade. Jade has one Monroe man to Ross beat. To catch Monroe him, Ross. Though. Monroe catches him at the 10 yard line. But boy, oh boy, Trudnowski dodged a bullet as Kavienga came in untouched again 
Got the ball to Jade, and it was off to the races with an 84-yard, uh, check that, a 74-yard catch. Jade is number one receiver on the season, and boy, he went to him, and it paid off big time for him. Down to the five-yard line. Wow. So that was a 79-yard gain. And again, Monroe Ross showing his excellent speed as he gets in to stop the touchdown, but it is a first and goal inside the five. And now we have the penalty flag again. Should be another delay a game. Time. And that's what it is. The Lear game is a signal by the official hat knock. It was Coach Dion Tolliver not real happy with his defense there as Ryle Jade got behind everybody on that last play. Two thirty-nine left to go in the third quarter, and the Sea Kings are knocking on the door. This has been a very tough battle, Rufus. Only very ten tough to battle. three. Only ten to three, and that's what that's what I spoke about earlier when they came out of it. And I mentioned to you that that three-point lead was not enough to expect it to stand up. Should know, Trudnowski with the fade pattern. And this is incomplete. Carbonell, the intended receiver. So that'll be second down and goal from the 10. There you see it again, just a one step drop. And this ball was intended actually for Steven Perez. Perez, 6'4", 195 pounder, a good target. So they got the tall guys out there. On this big second down play, man in motion. Trudnowski again rolls to the left. Is he gonna run for it? There he goes, as Levitai is there to run him down. Fumbles it out of bounds, they'll keep possession of it. Crowd got a bit of a rise, but the ball was so far out of bounds, it was never even a question about retaining possession. So a smart play by the senior quarterback, the Division I hopeful for next year, as you see him just take off. So now it's third down and goal from the five yard line. So you get five yards back. And Lusinger's defense is tightening up again, so a huge third down play. Big third, well, this is a big goal line stand all the way around. Trying to preserve their three-point lead. Trudnowski, look out! Fumble! As he was hit by Kavienga, is it gonna be recovered? It looks yeah. like the Sea Kings got it. Sea Kings got it, and I'll tell you exactly. Well, no! no the Olympians got it. Losinger's ball. Not only did they get the sack, the fumble, and the recovery, and get the ball. A huge play by not, Losinger's not, not defense. Now the official changes his mind and decides that, it's, that it is still the Sea Kings football, as he indicates by the clinched fist that it's fourth down. Okay, so it's fourth and goal, all the way back to the 25-yard line. And a good call. Now the clock is still running as it's, you know, and now the uh, PA announcer it, says first and 10. It cannot be a live clock while they're spotting the ball. Yeah. And the clock is running. And Ramsey is gonna try the field goal attempt. This is going to be a 41 yard field goal. Gotta be close to delay a game sooner or later. 41 yard is blocked block. by Monroe Ross again. It's picked up by Jade. And now he's gonna be run out of bounds. Yep. Great special teams again by Monroe Ross. That's his second block. Yep field goal of the game. And Monroe Ross chased him down to save the touchdown on, on, on this drive. So that's three big plays Monroe Ross has made for tonight. Monroe, you just moved yourself up to the top of the player of the game ballot. A 41 yard field goal attempt. And so with the timeout on the field, Losinger will take over at the 35 yard line as Monroe Ross blocked a 40-yard field goal attempt at the end of the first half. 
So Monroe Ross in two plays saved nine points. Well, he certainly did, Lou, and in doing that, as I said, one blocking, blocking uh, field goal attempts is no easy task in and of itself. No. Okay? And you're laying yourself out there, and the guys who do that deserve a lot of credit, first of all. And then secondly, and if you, if you recall, I said it when I saw Monroe running him down from behind. I said that Monroe would catch him, caught him at the five. That saved the touchdown, and look at the payoff they get for it. That's right. All in all, Monroe Ross is, uh, well, he saved nine, nine points in that drive, and then the end of the first half saved three points, so he has saved Losinger, what, uh, uh, 12 points. 12 points, two touchdowns. Or the equivalent of two touchdowns, you're right. So the 6'2 senior is now split to the far side, the left side, as his first and 10 for the Olympians. And boy, would a touchdown or any type of a score right now be some breathing room for the Olympians. The pitch goes to Rogers. Rogers He's got a beautiful a nice block out here. Block. Here's here the hole. Rogers has one more blocker. But boy, what a kick out block by Eugene Tashinga as this one goes past midfield, first down for the Olympians inside Sea King territory. Not one to second guess, or to second guess Mark Rogers, but looks like there was daylight to the outside. He turned it up inside into the traffic, and that's where they brought him down after the big game. 15 yard gain, Rufus, for Mark Rogers. Of course, with this being his home field, a lot of time a guy knows where the dips and the, and the darts are, and the divots are in the field and how to stay away from him. Rogers gets about one on that carry. So the Sea Kings uniforms are getting a little dirty right now. A little, not a whole, there's probably not a whole lot of rain on the ground for mud. No. 30 seconds and clock is running after the running play. Quick third quarter here for us. Boy, and. Thus far, a scoreless third at that. That's right. Tight formation for the Olympians as they jump offside. Let's see if they are drawn off. Here, that uh, lightning has us all a little bit on edge. Yeah. Somebody's stereo is awful, has a lot of bass right. in it. <laughs> yeah. Or that, 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 and when I see somebody's camera flash. Yeah, <laughs> makes me a little jumpy. 41 yard line is the line of scrimmage of the Sea King. So it's second down and five for Losinger. And the third quarter comes to an end. And again, I think the, uh, the short sheeting on the clock again. Right. <laughs> okay. But the Olympians have got to feel good as we end this third quarter. Again, both teams had, had two possessions each. Neither team able to make anything out of their possessions. However, the Olympians, this is their second possession, and they have an opportunity to move the ball. But the good thing that happened, again, was special teams play by the Olympians. The defense gave up one big play uh, there. I'm sorry, we got Charity down downside. We'll go to Charity, and I'll complete that thought when she's done. All right, guys, tonight the thunder and lightning is not only going on in the air and in the sky, but it's going down right here on the field. As you can see, I can hardly contain myself. These guys down here are playing with a new level of enthusiasm. Now, Coach Tolliver told me yesterday, he said the difference from last year and this year, he said, is, is that level of enthusiasm. He said they bring a new energy. They believe that they can win. They believe that they can run the game plan. He said, also, they trust me. He said, because this is his second year, first as head coach, he said there's a cohesiveness to this team. And he said every time they go out on the field, every time the ball is snapped, you can see it, he said, and it just comes out like fire. So fire, thunder, lightning, all the elements are here. We're rolling into the fourth quarter, and it's going to go down. Back to you. Thanks, Charity. If there's a black cat running on the field, I'm going home. <laughs> Man of Sakona, the six-foot, 250-pound senior, has really grown uh, since we saw him last year, Rufus. This is just a terrific athlete and a terrific quarterback for this Olympian team and the true leader out on that field as Rogers gets the pitch Rogers has some blockers cuts back inside Rogers squirts his way past the 35 yard line and another first down for the Olympians and they're starting to roll they're starting to roll and again 
the Seahawk team, Sea King team, starting to wear down just a little bit here. Uh, that last drive took a lot of steam out of them. When you're first and goal from the five, and you turn it over, that'll take the starch out of you, and that's what's happened to this team. So a seven yard gain for Rodgers as the Thunder keeps crackling to the north of us as the fourth quarter is underway, 11.25, clock rolling. Rodgers gets the ball, gets through the hole. Stiff arms one man down to the 20, puts his head down to the 15. Mark Rodgers with some lightning of his own. And now we've got a late flag back up here, which I believe is gonna be, not sure that's gonna be a, well, it is a holding, okay. Came in real late, our head was focused on the on the play, and I thought it may have been a uh, sportsmanship foul, but if it's a holding foul, it's gonna go against the Olympians, it would appear, and that's gonna back them up 10. So the holding call nullifies the nice run by Mark Rogers down to the 15. That would have been a 20 yard gain, but now it's a 10 yard loss, so a 30 yard switch on that play. So the new line of scrimmage is the 42 yard line. Right back where they started the fourth quarter. Right. First and 20, Sakona hands the ball off to Rodgers again. Rodgers following his blockers and following big old Ralph Horton. That's a nice guy to hide behind. That it sure is. Big Ralph checking in at about 6'6", and he's well over two himself, so. So got gain of about nine yards to the 35 yard line. Understand I was talking one of the fans at halftime that Ralph has always had a passion for football. I was mentioning, whoa, we had never seen him play before. Didn't quite see things eye to eye with the former coaching staff, so he chose not to play and concentrate on basketball instead. Deep pass has a man open and it's picked off. Sorry about that, Rufus. No problem. It's picked off and it's picked off because as much as we've talked about Monroe Ross, here's what he did wrong. He waited for the ball to come to him instead of coming back to the ball. I mean, he was sitting there looking for the ball. Well, guess what? See, King, as we watch the replay here, and I hope we'll see this in our shot. Well, he got hit as he yeah. threw as well. That ball came floating down short as Wagoner picked it off. And uh, now we have a, an Olympian down around the line of scrimmage. And can't really tell who that is. All right, now we'll try to see if we can get a closer view of it. Looks like they're working on whomever it is that they're working on his leg. Hopefully it's just a cramp. Even in the cold weather here, you can cramp up if you don't hydrate yourself. So the Olympians still have the lead at 10 to three, but as they were marching towards the end zone, the pass was picked off from Manasakona by Wagoner. Adam Wagoner, the 5'9 uh, senior from the Sea Kings. Well, if it was picked off, it looks like if there's a saving grace for the Olympians, they're going to spot it at the one yard line, is where the Sea Kings will have the ball. So they've got first and a whole football field to get in as they continue to attend to the Olympians. Boy, going back to some of the information in today's Daily Breeze, you know, they recapped each league and start because we're in league season and start to look at who's who and what's what. Over in the Ocean League, for our friends over there, the, the Hawthorne Cougars, they were not kind to them at all. They say the Cougars have absolutely no chance at it. <laughs> oh, but they did say the, that the job, that the Cougar effort should be focused on building for the future, as this season is a rebuilding season for Coach Swain. Which it is. Over in the Pioneer League, which is where our good friends, Lawndale Cardinals play. And of course, we had the Cardinals last week over at Bosa Grande, home of the Matadors. Well, what a difference a year makes there, huh? And they're saying 
Londell would have been a contender if they had won last week. But if they had seen the game, I would make Londell a contender because, quite frankly, Londell was cheated. Uh, well, Londell lost their opportunity to at least have been in scoring position to win the game. Right. And that we do know. I mean, we, we, we watched the replay from Many several times. different angles, and we saw that. Yeah, Tom Strick, Fadden, and the crew uh, doing very well, uh, uh, doing a terrific job again this year. As uh, well, he, even the opposition, the Palace Verdes coach, Pat Fresh, was telling us that uh, he enjoyed watching the broadcast and complimented. Another Bay League action tonight. We had the Redondo sea, Seahawks at Peninsula, home of the Panthers. Miracosta, the Mustangs, were taking on West Torrance. The Tartars. Let me hear that score again. That's a Daniel Levitai, okay. and uh, he's walking very lightly on his left leg there. So let's hope that Danny is okay. We've already lost, to, okay. we being the Olympians, we've already lost to Sean Mills. And right now we get the information that across town that South is winning big over the Lawndell Cardinals, 28 nothing. Yeah, that's not a big surprise, not with that running game. Not at all. But the Lawndell Cardinal Hama. team, they, they have looked good. And again, I think there's an excellent future ahead for that program. Just to finish the thought, the final Bay League team in action tonight uh, is West at Miracosta, as we were saying. So Palos Verdes has the ball at their own one yard line, have 99 yards to go, but the defense and Ona Cavienga is still fired up as that was no gain. So it'll be second and 10. As we see the replay again here down at Cavenga with excellent defense there on, on the Russian attack by them. And of course, the one thing that the Olympians right now want to accomplish clearly as it's a still a second and 10, is the hole is seeking deep in their own territory. That was uh, Derek Solar that was wrapped up. It's Kavienga going forward again, nose near the ball. And very little gain again for the Sea Kings as Solar. Well, Coach Fresh is team right now choosing to play it rather conservatively, if you will. They definitely are staying away from the pass which could be a big play to give them some breathing room. Instead, they're choosing to keep it on the ground. Well, especially and after they uh, were throwing the ball so well in the last drive before they, they went backwards and had the, the field goal blocked. Trudnowski looked like he was getting on a roll again as he had completed his last four out of five. 906. Now, this is where that clock guy could do me a favor. He could punch out a couple of two or three minutes at a time if he wanted to, you know. That's right, 858. <laughs> and now the 856, the clock stops. And timeout is called as they were getting close to getting a, uh, uh, another delay of game call. And the score is 10 to 7. Olympians over the Sea Kings in the Bay League opener here at uh, Stormy Lawndale. And let's go down to Charity Bailey. Guys, I have an update for you on uh, Daniel Lavatai. Now, I talked to his mom because she came down on the field, and she said about two weeks ago he came home after a game and had a pain in his the lower part of his left leg. Um, and she said, so she took him to the doctor, and it's just a pain. She said the doctor never diagnosed anything. So she said he probably should have set out today, but he's a warrior. He wants to play. So he, in playing, she says it's probably just something that's pulled again. And she says it's just the pain on his left side. Now, I saw the trainers down there working on him and they pulled out some lotion and they're just massaging it. So nine out of 10, it's a cramp. Coach Tolliver, while he was down on the field with him midfield, he yelled back to the assistant coaches that it's just a cramp. So hopefully it's just a cramp. Like his mom said, he probably should have sat out, but he's a warrior and he wanted to play and come out here with his team. So if we hear anything else, we'll let you know. Back to you. Thanks, Charity. Good work there. As uh, you know, Rufus, I think that Daniel Levitai, if he had a compound fracture, would say it's just a skid knee. Right. Hmm. And I can tell you, 
and after this playoff developed that comment, but that's good work by Charity to get the mom's viewpoint on it. Absolutely. Third down and 10, big defensive stand for the Olympians. Trudnowski back to pass. It is complete, but it is gonna short. be short of the first down as the pass was low and completed to Jade. And now it's gonna be fourth down and four yards to go. And they're gonna punt the ball away. They're gonna punt it away. They're gonna punt it to Monroe Ross. One thing's pretty for sure this time, unless something super strange happens, he won't be in blocking the kick because he's back to return it. Of course, he's an excellent return guy though. And he can make things happen if he's able to get his hands on the ball. Well, he, ever since he muffed one punt, he hasn't been near it. But Ramsey's punt now is a nice high spiral again, calling for the fair catch. Bounces straight up in the air, now takes a bounce into losing your territory. Excellent field position for the Olympians with 8.21 left to go in the ball game and a 10 to seven lead for Losinger. 10 to seven lead for Losinger, eight minutes left. Boy, they had an opportunity. The, well, first of all, the, uh, the Sea Kings at least forced a turnover, kept Losinger out of the end zone on that possession and now they've got to go back and do it again. Well, they also uh, did a good job in keeping them pinned down in their own end. So when they turn the ball back over to the Olympians, gives them this good field position, even though it was a terrific punt by Ramsey. Interesting alignment that they do defensively. You got everybody up there except for uh, three guys. So they got uh, eight men in the box yep. and offside now, and unless losing or drew them offside. Maybe yep. they jump because of that clap of thunder. I, they, they may have. I got to tell you, Lou, as, as, as we look at, of course, each year, High School Federation looks at ways to improve the game. I think that one of the things that you got to look at, unless they truly view it as a teaching tool, is, you know, when a guy steps over and gets back before the play, you, you, you got to, I would like to see that rule taken out. It's uh, at every other level beyond this, uh, it is that way. Right. So just even things up as Sakona gives it to Rogers and Sakona blows out a man over there. Rogers gets away from a man trying to get away from his own. Look at Rogers go! He's going to go to the house! Touchdown! Losinger! Are you kidding me? Dipsy dude dance, step left, right. There's a flag on the play though. Oh my and goodness. It looks like this is going to come back. It's over there in the neighborhood of holding or an illegal block back around the line of scrimmage. <laughs> so that'll make a beautiful highlight reel. Now what he can do is keep that to show a future coach. Fans don't like it at all, but that's Let's why it, it came Luke. in early. Look at that. Look at Sakona blasting guys out of there. First he goes right again. That's the strength that I'm talking about. Couldn't hold him. High hurdle of man. Now. That there was a bad decision. Try to get your arms around 55. Boom. Okay, I still didn't see it. Did you see a hold? Didn't see it for sure, but I got to tell you, the guy over on that side, maybe we can get another look at it. Can we re-rack that one, Tom, and look at it again? I don't and, know. And I've... Coach Tolliver didn't see it either, obviously. Yep, Deion Tolliver is really now barking comes... up the guy's tree there, so. There... There, there was the minor contact. I see what he called. That wasn't a hole. It wasn't a hole, and nor was it an illegal block. But in all fairness to the official from the angle, I've made that call myself. In fact, I've got a, a, a stack of games to do this weekend on the basketball side, officiating. You tend to see things from anticipation, and sometimes it'll get you in trouble. And the referee called that one on anticipation because of the angle that he was at and nullifying a good run by Mark Rogers. Certainly was. Was that a 10-yard penalty or a 15-yard penalty? Or a 10-yard penalty? Should have been a 10-yard penalty. Should have been, it was a 10-yard penalty. Okay. All right. So it was a two-yard gain for Rogers at the 37-yard line. Losing, Losing here takes a timeout. Uh, for Deion Tolliver maybe to cool off a little bit. No, he's getting on somebody's. He's jumping all over Mark Quentin Mitchell right now. I believe that that's their second of it. Well, I hope it looks like Charity's getting in all her interviews before the end of the game. So let's go down to her. 
All right, guys, you should see Danny Levitai back in the game shortly. Uh, the trainers massaged him on out, and he's just fine. The um, vice principal came over to talk to him, and he looked at him. He said, hey, Danimo, get up. That's his nickname, Danimo. He says, Danimo, get up. You all right? He said, yeah, I'm just fine. And he looked at his mom. He said, all right, mom, you can go back up in the stands now. I'm good. He took a drink of his Gatorade, burped, and he's ready to go back in. So look for him. Back to you. You know, that's kind of like my pre-game pre regimen. Take a drink uh, of... Uh of a beverage, give a nice belch, and I'm ready to go for the broadcast. Yep. <laughs> I think that decision about whether, what, what, whether he goes back into the game, though, will be made by the coaching staff depending upon the flow of the game. Yeah, as long as, so. as long as they have the lead, why put him in? Rogers going around in. Rogers has a head of steam, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and then some. Gets up to the 46-yard line, a gain of about nine yards, so it'll be third down and nine for the Olympians. Every player always wants to go back in against their, uh, sometimes against their better judgment, and I'm sure the, the coaching staff that's, and the medical staff that's working with them will participate in that decision as well. Just beyond the 45 yard line, Monroe Ross comes out of the game. In the game of wide receivers, Cartier Davis split out to the right, the far side. Rogers gets it. Rogers oh, flag. goes into a pile of dust. And yep, there's another flag. Rufus with 6.30 left to go in the ball game and 10 to seven losing their leading. And if that's against the Olympians, it's likely to be declined. So it'll be fourth and 10 should they decline it. And let's see what they did. And they do. I was gonna be surprised if they accepted that on a, on a fourth and 10. And from this field position, Losinger will have to punt. And it's a one yard gain for Rodgers on the fourth down at the 47 yard line. So in to punt the ball away for Losinger is Alex Hodrick. And their special teams and their defense are going to be asked to step up one more time, Lou. And it's getting now, getting into danger territory. That was the first big special teams play there. Nice kick. Now they got to cover it because it's coming back their way. But it sails out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And so Hodrick with a nice punt. So it'll be first and 10 for the Sea Kings at their own 25. This losing 503 team. left to go in the ball game, Rufus. I believe that's a six. Although if you ask the clock guy, he'll make oh, it a it five. It is a six. <laughs> yeah. But the important thing ab about the time now is that losing her by nature is not a quick strike team. And if Palos Verdes uses a lot of time on this drive and happens to punch in any type of score, that could be bad for the Olympian effort. So their defense is really going to be called upon now. Wow. There's a draw play by quarterback draw on that one on the bootleg, actually, and the fake handoff on the bootleg by Trudnowski gets was, to the 45-yard line. That was what they call a naked bootleg on that one. He was out there on his own. I mean, they run the fake, the side he came to, absolutely no blockers. He's all on his own, as you can see here on the replay. So a 16-yard gain for Trudnowski. And the second time that tonight that we've seen Coach Patrick Fresh go into the trick play bag and catch the Olympians off balance. Well, it's pretty much uh, known that they're probably going to pass from here on out with 5.57 left to go. But there goes the running back, Solar again. And he hot foots it for another five-yard gain out of bounds along the far sideline. But it'll be second and five. Well, they call a very interesting game when it's all said and done. I mean, quite frankly, as we've said here, I can imagine how difficult it is for the losing your coaching staff as well as the players on the field to figure out exactly what these guys are going to do. Just when you think you got them figured out for the pass, they run, and vice versa. Seven-yard gain for Solar. As Trudnowski has showed flashes of that great arm as the handoff goes right up front and no way, no gain. And was there a fumble? Losing her wow. gets the ball. Wow, that one got by me, boy. I saw the quick handoff to the fullback, 
and it looks like Monroe Ross recovered the fumble. Let's uh, find out this, if we can get that look on the replay and find out what happened. Quick handoff yeah. to the fullback. Yeah, and well, it, it came loose here. There it is. Hey, that was uh, Kavienga again, wreaking havoc. And Loden knew. Almost the did, way did, Chris Williams used to do it. Did Monroe come up with it? I'd love to know who recovered that fumble for the Olympians. Was that Monroe Ross or? But at any rate, it's losing her ball. 5.38 left to go at their own 49 yard line. Rogers gets it and pushes the pile forward for a couple of yards. Well, I think as you were about to say, as you said on the last drive when Palos Verdes said that we could expect to see the pass, and of course they ran. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you can expect to see losing a run the ball as we've got 5.15 left on the clock, clock running um, in the contest. This would be a time that you, that since they have the number one rusher in all of the South Bay, That's and right. Mark Rogers may yeah. as well control the clock. Absolutely. So again on the play of three yards, so it's second down and seven for Sakona and the Olympians. Hand off to Rogers, and he gets blistered behind the line of scrimmage. And not even Mano Sakona can hold that no. rush of white right. jerseys back. The trick now is to pick up first downs for the Olympians. I say that, of course, as they suffer a five-yard loss on the play. Well, actually, they're going to spot it back. Only they're a one-yard loss. Well, they're going to say it was where the contact Forward was. That's progress. a rather interesting spot because, but they give him forward progress. So a loss of two, actually, on the play because the line of scrimmage was at the Palace Verdes 48-yard line. Ball right on the midfield stripe, Lou, if they don't. Uh, okay. Is this and an it, official's timeout? No, if this no, is losing, losing this, that has to be their third and final, if I'm not mistaken. 4.08 left to go on the clock. And Losinger with a 10 to 7 lead and looking for a little bit of breathing room here. This has been a real, real alley fight. Lots of, lots of heavy punching going on. And I'll tell you what, Juana Cavienga has been a, a monster on defense. And Mark Rogers, of course, has done the work on offense, but and then Monroe Ross has been doing it on special teams and also defense. As Absolutely. I know you were watching Daniel Levitai down there in the sideline. He's just sitting on his wallet again. He's sitting on his wallet, and I think although he was hopeful of coming back, and from the way I saw the other medical official there with him, one's attending to him, and the other one is there. Uh, it looks like she's communicating to him that that's it for tonight. Might as well, it, you know, it's it's an aggravating kind of thing, the, the cramping and the pulled muscles, and there's no need to aggravate it anymore on this uh, damp night, and also with the, the turf a little slippery from the little bit of rain, it's still sprinkling it now, getting a little bit of a shower. Big third down play on offense for the Olympians. Third down and nine. Sakona back to pass, has a man open. It's caught. Monroe Ross gets first down yards and then some. Monroe Ross again. This has been, it may be Friday the 13th, but right now it's, it's, it's Monroe Ross's day as he has had a huge, huge game tonight. 15 yards on the pass and catch from Sakona to Ross. And Mano Sakona just keeps getting better every ball game behind center there and also throwing the ball. Just barely got away with that one. Yeah. <laughs> As that defender was looking, uh, was licking his chops on that one. So well, he was, and it was nearly the same thing where Ross was waiting for the ball to come to him. 4.03 left to go. As Rodgers goes as again, well. but there's a flag on the play, and I do believe that Ralph it's, Horton might have hit the line too soon on it, his block from the tight end. Procedure penalty against the Olympians. Well, you know what? As they were running that play, 
This is the same play that they had trouble with in the Hawthorne game. Uh, it's a timing pattern. I talked to Coach uh, Coach Tolliver after that game. In fact, I said, hey, Coach, what, what was going on? And he said, well, what we were trying to do was these guys are accustomed to going on a two count, I mean, on on, on one, and we want to change it to a two as we see the now replay here. Okay, they call the uh, Ralph for illegal motion in the backfield. But uh, Mark Rogers ran right behind Ralph Horton's block. And that nullifies the second and, touchdown of the game. And I must admit that that one uh, does require a bit of explanation unless you're saying, because he can move forward. Uh, I don't know either. Again, on that, uh, well, now we have. Now we're going to have Somebody another getting, motion that, by. That was definitely an, uh, an illegal procedure on the tight end. But that's two calls that were questionable on on, uh, on losing her. On the hold on, yeah. on Mark Rogers' yep. no, first nullified touchdown run, and now this one on the illegal motion. So penalties now being a bugaboo for the Olympians. I think this is where one of the things you got to do at this point, if I've been bitten twice with penalties, I go back and simplify the playbook again and go back to what was working. So it'll be first down and 20 at the 45 yard line of the Sea Kings. Time is on their side, but they do need a, a, to get a couple of first downs here, Rufus. There's a man in motion again, sliding up the field. Handoff goes to Rogers on the draw play. And Mark Rogers, tough as gristle, yeah. getting down to the 40 yard line. So he gets five or six the hard way. Well, and it's a whole lot to ask of Mark Rogers to give me a do over three times. You know, I mean, the guy scored. I, I, we might be seeing a new record. How many times has one guy scored and had touchdowns called back in a single game? That's, he's had two. He had 14 carries in the first half, and now he's already up to 12 in this half. And one thing about it, well, I tell you, he holds the fans here because they'd love nothing more than to see Mark Rogers get in the end zone again. Second down and 15 yards to go. Man wow. in motion, and Ralph Horton comes out yeah. of his stance. Yeah, that As the uh, defense now. They know something's cooking, and they know that they can get the yeah. Olympians to come offside. So you can chalk that one up to the uh, Sea King defense. Sea King defense, and once again, my call will be right now, it's not going your way. You got to go back and simplify the playbook. Go back to basics. Yeah. So now the game isn't about going in reverse, it's about going forward. Absolutely. Didn't we see that uh, one game here? The last game we were well, here, everything was going in, it was, or was that the, the Mayor's Cup? That was the was Mayor's Cup. That, that, that was the flag ball. <laughs> yeah. 235 left to go in the ball game. Second down okay. and 20 for Losinger. Mark Rogers gets the ball, tries to bounce outside, does, has a hole, and just can't get away yeah. from the defender. As that looks like that was Jade. Also there, that was Mickey Mance who hung on for dear life to Mark Rogers. Gets back to about the original line of scrimmage, the 35 yard line. So it'll be third down and 10 yards to go. Clock running, 2.09 left. So, two minutes left in the game, clock running. Boy, and what has been a low scoring affair particularly for this losing her, well, actually for both teams. We, we, we certainly expected more offensive fireworks on the scoreboard from both of these teams, and uh, neither has delivered, but the Olympians have the lead and under two to make it hold up. Defense is digging in in the white jerseys. The blue jerseys want to blow them out. Rodgers with the pitch. Rodgers gets down to about the 30-yard line, and there's a big decision to make now for Coach Dion Tolliver on fourth and five. Well, 
first of all, he's gonna let the clock run as long as he possibly can. He'll take the five yard penalty. He's gonna force Palace Verdes to use their timeout. That's a three yard gain. Which is to be expected. That from the looks of it, if we look at the side mark, it's gonna be still a third and about six, maybe even seven, but we'll call it. It's a long six. Third and six and, oh, fourth and six, excuse me. I said third and six, I meant fourth and six, as you see the rain coming down. And yes. Coach Tolliver, Millican Ram out of Long Beach. Coaching this guys, he's got his game plan well in mind. He knows what to want to accomplish. You're right, it's a decision. Now, we'll play sideline coach because we don't get paid to coach. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> nobody's going to be mad at us. But That's here's, true. Here's what I'd do. I'd kick it away. I'd okay. go ahead and kick it away. Um, try to pooch kick it, get it in their end zone. They're going for it. Mark Quinton Mitchell and Mark Rogers in the backfield. That's what I would have done. I mean, yeah. you have the leading rusher in the Bay League. There's a full house backfield, as a matter of fact. Daniel Levitai is not there. He's on the sideline. Rogers with it. Rogers is going to be stopped. He is stopped. Well, now it's up to the defenses. The rain is really starting to come down harder now. Rain's starting to come down harder, but so far, no thunder and no lightning. That's OK. That's OK, as we are sitting on aluminum. <laughs> All I know is that this rain is going to cut into Charity's airtime, post-game airtime considerably. So the ball is at the 30-yard line, a one-yard gain for Rodgers. 106 left to go, and now it's nervous time. Put on your seatbelts and your helmets. This is going to be a long, exciting 106 as this pass is incomplete wow. as the defender was Cartier Davis and the intended receiver was Steven Perez. Well, you can expect to see that. And boy, as if right on cue, the rain's getting even thicker. Yep. And now that's not good news for Andrew Trudowski, the quarterback. Not at all. Even though he grew up in the rain in Washington. Means he's got a slippery ball to work with and his receivers also have a slippery ball as we're being joined by got some friends. Uh, a number of the fans here. That's your fan club. The Rufus Washington Marching Society is here. Trudowski out of the shotgun. Trudowski back to pass, moves up in the pocket, throws, incomplete. And he was nailed as he threw it. Cartier Davis again with good defense on Alex Yanez, but to Trudanowski didn't have a whole lot of time to get not, some mustard on. Not, not a lot of time, and again, under pressure, and right now, just like they expected, as we watch on the replay here. Look at Kavienga in his shirt that he's again. He's going to pass on every down. So the Olympians right now playing back on, on, on defense to prevent the pass. Kavienga gets the gold medal for defense tonight. He has just been inside of Trudanowski's jersey all game long. 58 seconds left to go. Third down and 10. Trudanowski throws it long. Overthrown. Fourth down. The Olympians hold. With 54 seconds left. The Olympians have got to do it. One more down. So he really overthrew at that time as Trudanowski probably hasn't had a game this bad in a long, long time. And now Trudinowski went all the way over to the sideline, rushing back out, bringing gonna, the play in. It's gonna be fourth and 10, and yep, they're gonna have to go for it with no 54 seconds here. left. As Monroe Ross is playing his safety spot back at his, at his own 46 yard line. That's what you call playing deep center field. And now Trudanowski throws it on the wide receiver screen. It's going to be the, he's going to throw it down. Has Boom. that open. Oh, oh, I thought oh, that was goodness. coming, baby. Monroe Ross yeah. really gave yeah. him a lick, but it's but it, first down yeah. on the catch <laughs> by Adam Wagoner, and I, he really took a lick from Monroe Ross. Oh, I saw that one coming from a mile away. <laughs> My goodness. 
18 yards though on the game. I think he'd take that every time. Yeah. Watch this hit, blammo. Yeah. Yeah. And now, yeah. Trudinowski throws the ball down to stop Spikes the clock. Spikes it to stop the clock on the first down. That'll give them time to get reset if we have the opportunity to see one more time that huge hit by Monroe Ross. As Tom is re-racking that one. And again, this game is being played in memory of Army Specialist Francisco Robinson, who gave his life to his country in Afghanistan. The Losinger graduate. It's second down and 10, first and 10. It actually should be second down. As Cavienga is coming on the blitz. Yeah. The, pro, the timing play yeah. is incomplete, but yeah. Cavienga screwed that one up again. Absolutely. Actually, I should say messed that one up again. It certainly did. That one. And while we were talking about Monroe Ross's big hit, got to give a lot of credit to the receiver for Palace Verdes, though, for holding on to the ball. Absolutely, on that last play to give him the first down. As uh, that was Jade, the intended receiver, on that last play. Palace Verdes still alive, fans. There are 40 seconds left. It's a second and 10 for them. Ball's at their own 49 yard line. And uh, they're saying it's second down. Second down and 10 from the 40 yard line. The fans are waking up. Trudinowski throws it long. Is it too long? Yes, it is. So it's third and 10 from the losing her 48 yard line. And Trudinowski looking to his coach again as that pass was intended for Perez. And covering on the play was Alex Leota, the strong safety. So 35 seconds left to go, hey, One official is signaling that it's fourth down. Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, okay, although the clock is third. You know, but, and I'll talk about that later. Now the, the uh, yeah, the, because the, the ball was spiked yeah. on the first play. Right. And they never rotated the numbers along the sidelines. So it should know, be but, fourth but, down. But he, here, here's what has to be said, all right? And, and I'm sure that Coach Tolliver is going to work with his crew during the course of this week. These are your own people who are making these kind of mistakes, though. And that's, yeah. a, that's this that is your mistake home field. is in the, the favor they of the Seacanes. They Seekings. don't get to bring their own uh, uh, down linesmen. They don't get to bring their own clock. You know, we've had clock issues tonight. We've had uh, sideline marker issues all throughout the night. And this is all by the home team. And what this does... This, de this delay in getting all this stuff straightened out gives Palace Verdes an opportunity to regroup. I mean, you got him on the rope. It's just like a fighter. You can't give, if you got a guy uh, wobbly, you go ahead, you put him away. You don't give him time to get his legs back under him. Especially with a, a guy like Trudinowski who can deliver the knockout punch. Absolutely. And One also, pass. And let's go down to Charity. All right, Lou. Now, when I talked to Coach Tolliver, we talked about game time situations like this one where there's not very many seconds left on the clock. You're in the fourth quarter, and it's do or die. I asked him about clock control. He said it's simple, Charity. He said if we're winning, we run the clock. He said if we're losing, we're trying our darndest to stop it. So right now, they're, they're trying to stop this play so that they can pull out the win. Back to you. Charity looking just as fresh as sunshine down on the field. Fresh as sunshine, but How I will say, I know it? the budget's a little bit tight. But I think we can squeeze an umbrella out of the budget for it. Though. I mean, I think so. <laughs> I think you and I should go to the 99 cent store right. and maybe grab one for. Her. I don't know. That's uh, if you can pay 48 cents. You got 48. Do I got? I got well, 48 I got, cents. Well, I, well, I got a, and I got an umbrella. That's 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 what we need to get to. Her. But Charity At any rate, the trooper. Though, it's but here's the ball down. game. This is it. Fourth down and ten. You have one of the better quarterbacks in the South Bay. Out of the shotgun formation. Chudanowski back to pass. Wants to go to the right side. Under throws his man. Losinger takes over on downs with 30 seconds left to go. They'll have the ball at their own 48 yard line. And Chudanowski is coming over to talk to Casey Carbonell and said, What happened there? Well, what happened there was that it was a desperation play, first of all. Didn't, didn't go their way. Carbonell went a little farther up the field as. As we watch it here, we don't see the tail end of it where Carbono is. He was right. Well, in he was front right there, but Jesse not quite James. sure what, what what his reaction to the ball was. 
So the Losinger defense holds up again with a little bit of help on the mix-up on the offensive play by Palos Verdes. So 30 seconds left to go, and all they really need to do is kneel on the ball. And that's what Sakona does, and that should be it. As, well, maybe one more play. One more kneel just to make sure. That's what it looks Sakona like. And says, ah, let's just do it. They're going to let the clock count down. And now the clock right. keeper, the timekeeper, can exactly. let it go. Well, Ten seconds left to go, and it's a big win in the Bay League opener. And, that, and, you're, and you're exactly right. A huge win for the losing your Olympians. Boy, what we thought would be, and I guess Friday the 13th makes it funny that way. What we thought was going to be an offensive explosion ends up being a... Um, ends up being a defensive struggle instead for the two teams. And that's good to see because last year, the Olympians would let some of those games slip away. And it was good to see them finish the deal on defense and close out the Sea Kings to go 1-0 and in the Bay League with a 10-7 win over Palos Verdes. And even though it was a defensive struggle, it was a good outing for the Olympians at home. They held serve on their home field. And uh, boy, so their record in Bay League competition, as we begin the first week of league competition, they're one and zero. And that's always good. We like it when they win. It's always good, boy. And as I said, big, big plays. A lot of different things we can talk about. We can talk about the two touchdowns that uh, they're, they're, that they're Mark Rogers back. had called back. The very questionable um, calls. Well, we can talk about. They're ticky-tacky. Ticky-tacky, yeah. That particularly the one there, as I said, I, I, I admit, and you hate to see that happen, but I can tell you that the official called that one on anticipation. That doesn't make it any better in terms of having called it when it shouldn't have been called. Um, and the other one also was, was, was a bit questionable. But, boy, what an effort by the losing Olympians as they win 10-7. to And we'll come back with the post-game show right after this. The Olympian flame will shine tonight, 10 to seven, losing her over Palos Verdes on Channel 22 Sports. And we are back at Olympian Field where the torch is burning brightly tonight. In the Bay League opener, the Olympians take it over the Sea Kings, 10 to seven, and uh, some quick numbers uh, on rushing for Mark Rogers as he had uh, 29 carries and 165 yards. And let's go down to Charity. All right, guys, I got a playmaker and a half down here with me. Monroe Ross, now two block field goals. What's going on in your mind when you see them line up like that with five seconds left on the clock? How do you read that play so well that you come in and stop it right where it's at? Um, basically, to let you know, it's Jesus, man. I, I mean, we worked so hard. We worked so hard this uh, this whole off season about. Uh, actually, it was Cartier's play. He's supposed to, um, you know, what I'm saying block that. But coach put me in because he knew I, I was a little taller than him. And, you know, I could catch up. But basically, it's just coach calling the right plays at the right moment. And um, Jesus, man, Jesus is everything. He putting it in my heart. And you know, I, I gotta thank him first. All right, now let's talk about heart. Your team exhibited a lot of heart t tonight. Uh, scored 10-7, offense and defense every day. What do you guys talk about in practice to come out and be ready for game time situations like this? Uh, shoot, uh, right now, after every practice, we just coach is talking about uh, you know the thing, the mistakes that we've done. You know, every practice he gets on us about mistakes. If we have a good game, he gets on us about mistakes and mistakes and you know how we can get over those. Like he just, uh, you know, what I'm saying he just work with us. You know, all he does is just tell us the mistakes so we can work hard and it, it flips our minds off like we need to play harder. And uh, the next day for other practice, we work hard and we work on our problems and then we get to, we'll be successful during Thursdays and Fridays. And when the game come, we know what we did last week and mistakes. And then you know, what I'm saying we. You know, we overcame them and we, you know, did what we had to do. All right. Thanks, Monroe. Good game. Guys, when I come back, I'll have Mark Rogers and Fono Sakona. Back to you. Thank you very much, Charity Bailey. Terrific job and uh, not so good conditions. I know we're spoiled here in Southern California, but uh, we're back uh, where I did some high school football in West Central Illinois. 
It's uh, in sub-freezing temperatures there right now. So are you kidding me? I am real happy to be here, especially with the losing your 10 to 7 win on opening night of the Bay League, Rufus. Oh, absolutely. And of course, Charity's ready with her next set of interviews. So let's get to her. All right, guys, I have the leader of this team and the leading rusher in this league. Guys, you opened up this league pulling out pulling out the W. Now, your coach talked about you being a strong leader and your guys respecting you a lot. Talk to me about being the leader on this squad. Uh, well, oh, I feel, I feel uh, good about my uh, team because I'm leading them and my, I'm telling the line to block for uh, the running back and, yeah. All right, now how do you keep your, your heads in the game when um, you're throwing interceptions? How do you come back from that? I just, uh, as it, when I throw the interceptions, I just forget about it and work it, uh, work it on defense. All right, now on defense, talk about your, your linebacker. You're part of that linebacking core. You guys were penetrating their O-line, causing the quarterback to um, throw the ball away many times. What do you guys talk about in practice or do in practice to work that out like that? Just pass rush, make the... Make the quarterback um, hesitate on throwing the ball. Okay. Now, Mark, you had a few touchdowns called back tonight, um, but you came back and you scored anyway. Talk to us about what's going on on the field when um, plays are being made, but they're being called back. Uh, people make mistakes. We just got to work hard at our practice, and when we do it on the field, we just got to try to come back and score again. If we can't get it then, we got to keep coming back, coming back, coming back. All right, now this was a tough game. Is this an indication of what the rest of the league is looking like at this point? Uh, I'm not sure. I saw other teams play, but we're going to work harder, and hopefully it's, we don't have to have close games like that, so we don't have to like struggle to score touchdowns at the end. All right, now last year you left Peninsula with an L. What's the team's mindset after you go back this week and get ready for Peninsula next week? Oh, we're ready. We're going to work hard this week, and we're going to try to go up there and get this W. All right. All right, guys, there's a W down here on the field tonight for the league for the league opener for them. Now they're 1-0 in league. We're going to come back with Coach Tolliver. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Charity Bailey. And uh, Mano Sakona's numbers, uh, Rufus, were impressive uh, for him. Three out of nine for 80 yards had one interception as Mark Rogers got the lone touchdown. 29 carries, 165 yards unofficially. And uh, also on the other side of the ball, uh, Chudernowski, I should say, Andrew Chudernowski, who's headed for either the Pac-10 or the WAC next year, was a 10 out of 22 for 157 yards. That big 79-yard hookup really helped out, but he was sacked twice. And uh, uh, it was Uona Cavienga who was in his jersey most of the night. <laughs> Well, yeah, the down, the down lineman certainly put a lot of pressure on him, and that's why he didn't have the type of night that we'd expected to see. But the losing her defense overall played a very good game and came up with big plays. However, for my money, tonight the special teams was the key component of the game, especially in a low-scoring affair like this. The kicking aspect, they got a field goal out of it, which is not something we often see. They got an extra point mm -hmm. out of it. They got two blocked uh, field goal attempts, okay, and then they started some getting punning, some too. good punting, which kept um, Palace Verdes in bad field position throughout the evening. I know we're expecting to see uh, Coach Tolliver, but I think he's deep in the bowels of the locker room, <laughs> and we're not likely to see him. I think we need to look past that and into uh, where we are tonight all right that's right a big win for losing her 10 to 7 tonight mark rogers uh, the workhorse on offense mano sakona uh, continues to impress throwing the ball and uh, but like you say uh, monroe ross was truly outstanding on special teams along with uh, number 15 rafael reyes who was uh, actually gave the uh, uh, olympians the winning margin with his foot and like you say we wouldn't have seen that last year Certainly would not have, and that's good to see as a part of that. And that's going to come into play somewhere down the road. So we know what the Olympian offense can do. We know what the defense can do. So for those guys on special teams, it was great to see them come through tonight and have an outstanding game for the Olympians led by uh, Monroe Ross. And uh, next week it will be Palos Verdes Peninsula at Penny. High school is uh, losing or just missed. I mean, last year that's what was the downfall 
of the Olympians. It was the special teams and the defense that uh, that let them down. Or they could have come out, they could have escaped to P Peninsula High School, a tough place to play uh, with the win there last year. And uh, so it, now it's time to pick our player of the game, our Channel 22 Sports player of the game. All right, well, my vote's real simple. Tonight, for me, mm -hmm. it was Monroe Ross. It was the special teams as a unit, all right? right? And maybe I got to split that. The special teams as a unit and Monroe Ross as the individual player. And I got to agree with you because he saved in total 12 points for the Olympians uh, on a tackle. Came up and grabbed a receiver from behind. And then the two block field goals, another six points. So I will agree with you there. Monroe Ross is our Channel 22 Sports Player of the Game. And also a very good guest of Charity Bailey, who is a good sport in rainy conditions. Uh, all night long here and also a little bit of thunder and lightning but uh, what the heck we all need the the fear of the man upstairs put into us every once in a while and you say it was a friday 13th and what you call a friday the 13th day trixodexophobia that is a uh, the fear of friday the 13th well i think palos verdes will fear it a little bit more than the olympians but you're right this tonight's game had a little bit of everything and it's not often that we have the fun and pleasure to do it in rain and Thunder and Lightning here at Olympian Field. And, of course, again, thanks to the crew for providing us some cover. But it was an exciting game, and congratulations to the Olympians for getting off to a positive start in this Bay League campaign. One down, four to go. And as I say that, I just see a, a flash of lightning down the 405 or the 105 a little bit where you and I are going to go. Absolutely. But uh, I want to thank Tom Strick, Fadden, and the crew. Uh, Dion Tolliver finally came out, but I do believe uh, he's going to get a delay of game penalty on us. All right. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. All right. Why don't we just put the bow on this one and uh, and wrap her up? There we are. Okay. There it is. Okay. We're going to wrap up game one of the Bay League for the losing your Olympians. And uh, along with Charity Bailey, Rufus Washington, Tom Strick Fadden, and his terrific crew, I'm Lou Stowers telling you once again the final score from Olympian Field, losing your 10, Sea King 7. Until next week, so long. Just, we don't know what's going on with Redondo and South, but right now, basically, we're concerned with the top three spots. We know where the top three spots and how they stand. First of all, the Peninsula Panthers and the Losinger Olympians, and I'm going to go in alphabetical order, so it's Losinger and Peninsula are tied at the top of the Bay League standings at 2-0. and oh. Miracosta is 1-1, one and, one, and again, as you say, we don't know the result of Redondo South game. But the key is Miracosta, uh, Peninsula, Losinger. All right there at the top with Losinger leading the way 2-0. There are a couple more wins away from ensuring themselves of a playoff spot. Well, Rufus, uh, we're gonna think we're going to put the wrap on another game, another successful game for Losinger and another successful game for us here at Channel 22 Sports. As always, want to thank you very much for absolutely for coming in. In his 18th, is his 18th or 19th? 18th. 18th year, man, 18th old season. enough to vote. You got that right, but they've all been fun. And it's games like this every night. I mean, this is what you come to see. The fans had a great game. Losinger had great fan support. I want to mention that tonight because we talked about it a little bit last week, and we gave the fans the business for not coming just a few more miles down <laughs> the road to Redondo. It, they can make it, Absolutely. Right? Well, right. they came out tonight, gave great support to their team, and it was just enough of an edge to get them over the top. We talked about them traveling on the road the last five weeks. Boy, they get a chance to go home and play at Olympian Field. That's right, and get some home cooking. 
and uh, warm up their hands on the old torch up there. That's one of the, my favorite things is, is to look at that beautiful torch there at Olympian Field. And, uh, yep, we'll see what happens next week, that's for sure. All righty. All right. For Rufus Washington and Charity Bailey, Tom Strick Fadden and the great crew, um, Lou Stowers, want to thank you for watching us all season long, whether it's volleyball, basketball, baseball, or right here on the gridiron. As I want to thank you very much as we're here all year long with high school sports on Lawndale Hawthorne Community Television Channel 22. And I'm Lou Stowers telling you the final score once again from Warrior Field. Losinger wins their sixth in a row, 34-29 to over West High here in Torrance. Until next week, so long. The preceding presentation of this Channel 22 Sports Game of the Week was brought to you in part by a generous donation from the Holiday Inn Express Hotel and Suites South Bay. The Holiday Inn Express is partnering with Channel 22 Sports to help promote our young people in sports competition and academics so that everyone in our community wins. The Holiday Inn Express Hotel and Suites. Stay smart. The preceding presentation of this Channel 22 Sports Game of the Week was brought to you in part by a generous donation from the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. The South Bay Workforce Investment Board is working together with Channel 22 Sports to promote an environment where everyone can maximize their career potential and so that all employers have the human resources they need to grow and prosper. The South Bay Workforce Investment Board. When you need us, we are there for you. Tiger itself has been around for a couple of years, but it's still a relative newcomer to the battlefield. The servicemen work.